perfect match Chosen by science, but you had to marry them right this second You would tell me, well that sounds pretty whack And I would add you having weeks to know if you really love them You just got married at first sight Jason and Asia gonna tell you Welcome to A Perfect Match, where today we'll be talking about Married at First Sight, Season 18, Episode 4. I'm one of your hosts, Jason Reed. With me, as always, I required an STD test before she could come into the re- podcast recording. Asia Welch. Asia, how are you? I'm fine. <laughs> I was just, I've, yet, I've, yet to, I, I've yet to see your results, Asia. I need to. <laughs> I, I need those. I am as caught off guard as Alan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> As the father of the podcast, yeah, that's right. I did not expect to hear that from you. <laughs> Before we go any further. Right. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, hey, too far. Too far. <laughs> okay, Dad. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, I'm fine. I'm doing well. I'm excited to talk about this episode. I feel like with having last week off, it feels like we haven't talked about this show in ages. Yeah. So uh, I'm happy weeks, to be here. Two weeks feels like a lot when you, uh, you know, in your math, when you're in the thick of the maths land, right? You know, it's right. like, how do I even do this anymore? Yeah. <laughs> it's like we were going 80 and then we mm-hmm. slammed on the brakes. Especially since it was so unexpected. Like last time when we finished recording last the last podcast, we did, I didn't even know we were going to be off for the next week. The, yeah, it just mm-hmm. came as a surprise a few days later. Like, See you oh. next week. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and we are not alone. We have our glorious uh, third co-host for the season uh, popping in and out. Uh, the Mari Fourth. Mari, how are you? I didn't know this is that type of party. I. Um... <laughs> You know, you didn't bring your results. I didn't bring my results. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little suspicious, Mari. That's a little suspicious. Uh, we told you you needed to come in the podcast. I, I don't know what to do now. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, I cannot believe it's been, it feels so long. And yeah, I, I didn't know we were gonna be taking a break either. I think, I, I think that was a mistake because I felt like the, the season was really moving and really shaking. Mm-hmm. And that that break, I was like, "What what's happening again? Okay, all right, we gotta get like I have to get back in it again. Like I gotta get back. I was so excited. I I messaged y'all like I want to be on the next one. Yeah. And it was like, well, <laughs> there is no next one. Like, <laughs> so... Puppy breaks. Puppy breaks. <laughs> <laughs> I know it felt like we lost steam a little bit because yeah. uh, it it would have been. I mean, why else? Why they skip? I just want to know. Hey, listen, Ooh. some of us, some of us may need a detraction that night. It was supposed to come exactly. on. I'm just saying, some of us did, some of us didn't. But you know, would have appreciated. It would have been nice to have something else to watch. I'm just yeah. saying. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, okay, I mean, whatever. But right. <laughs> it's like a lifetime really wanted to make sure that. Yeah. <laughs> Their mm. views were not you impacted. You can't lose out on that live viewership. <laughs> Makes sense, <laughs> yeah. I guess. Okay. I guess. Because every Tuesday at yeah. seven o'clock, I'm set. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, there's there's just absolutely no way. I I don't know. Yeah, I don't know when the last time I've watched a Married at First Sight episode live commercials. I'm like, uh, uh-uh, let's move. This along. Yeah, at the very least, I'm gonna need some lead time let's on the DVR. Uh, yeah, exactly. Fast forward yep. these commercials. Yeah, seven twenty. I'll start. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but thank y'all so much for being here. We're here to talk about episode four of season eighteen of Married at First Sight. If you did not catch it, we interviewed Pastor Cal from married at first sight it was an amazing interview he was like so open and so down to earth it was such a fun conversation so you if you've missed out on that go wherever you get your podcast go look up love the love at first sight feed you will find the podcast there our interview with pastor cal you would also find it on the rhap youtube channel 
if you want to look at him, uh, you can get the podcast there. But yeah, if you had subscribed, you would know that we had that interview. So make sure you go subscribe to the Love at First Sight feed. Also, the RHAP YouTube channel. That's where all of our podcasts are for uh, Married at First Sight, Love is Blind, The Ultimatum, which we just found out is coming back December 3rd. Unfortunately, um, it's not the ultimatum queer love, which was the best oh, version of even, the ultimatum. Even then. <laughs> uh, it's just the regular ultimatum. Um, and so make sure you go subscribe uh, wherever you get your podcast. Um, also, make sure you go leave us a five star rating and review. We really appreciate it when we know that y'all are listening and enjoying our content. So we shout out five star reviews when we get them. So we have one from Deborah Marie. It's titled Six Out of Five Stars. It says, Asia and Jason are the only reason I still watch these two train wreck shows, the dichotomy between the, uh, between optimistic Asia and realistic, cynical Jason is exactly what I want. <laughs> exactly what I want. You don't, you don't even have to watch the, the shows to enjoy this podcast. In fact, they're more entertaining than the subject matter. Thank you for your service. And then this emoji. Yeah. Yay. I mean, <laughs> am I Thanks cynical? doing the dirty work. Would yes. You, I'm what? cynical? <laughs> Is that news to you? <laughs> right? Am I? Like, I, I don't know. Like every review. Mm. Like, but in a positive way. At least it's in a positive way. I guess. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I'm usually right, though. I mean. Mm. If you say so. Mm. Hey. If I'm right, I'm right. I can't, you know. I'm, I can be cynical all day, but at least I'm right. I'll just say that. Um. All right. I'll do, I'll do another <laughs> review. Uh, oh this God, one check is, the stats on that. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, check the tapes. Check the receipts. Uh, I'll, I'm, I'm here for the investigation. Um, anyway, next review is from No to No. It's N-O-E to N-O-E. Uh, it's titled The Best Out There. It says, great chemistry amongst the hosts and good talk about all these shows. Short and sweet. I like that. Yeah, right. love right. it. Trying to the point. Uh, yeah, so thank you very much, everyone that's you know giving us reviews, ratings. Uh, we love to hear from you. We love to hear about how great we are and how cynical some of us are. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and while you're at it, if you're enjoying Merit at First Sight, or let's say you are listening to this and you're like, dang, it, feel like, it feels like it's been a while. Man, I wish I had some place to go to talk about the show. Mm -hmm. We have a Facebook group. So go look up A Perfect Match Podcast on Facebook. You will find our Facebook group. We have a great time in there talking about Merit at First Sight mostly, but sometimes we talk about Love is Blind or whatever else is going on in the world because um, there's still some tringling Love is Blind news out there. <laughs> if you you're unaware. Uh, so yeah, go, go join our Facebook group. We do have a password to join this week. The password is. Are you going to live there your whole life? <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> is either that or aren't you embarrassed? <laughs> right. Sheesh. Uh, yeah. So come on in. We, we love to hear everyone's takes and opinions. We have we have a live, uh, you know, commentary when the episode comes out for all those people that watch. Do, do you watch the episode live? Uh, you can uh, <laughs> talk, chop it up, talk about it. Uh, so come on in. We would uh, we love yeah. to. Have. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's 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 get into it. Well, actually, first, Mari, are you mm -hmm. enjoying the season so far? Oh yeah, I'm I'm enjoying the season. Enjoying y'all coverage. I mean, this is this is normally what I p poke my head in, you know, <laughs> the the good old honeymoon pissing contest. Like I love this episode, you know. It's when everybody first meets and gets together and pretend like they're doing great <laughs> if they can muster up the the pretense, you know. This is when people start questioning their their couple. It's just fun, fun times. Hey, yeah. some people been questioning since day one. Yes, at the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> exactly so, okay so let, let's go ahead and get started jason uh yeah we're gonna hit uh madison and alan first um of course we get the we get the wake up uh from the night before doesn't seem like any hanky panky went down you know i'm always we're always keeping our eye out for those that have mm -hmm. gone all the way the first night but uh, i don't think anything i don't think anything toward happened there uh they talk a little bit they're gonna get some breakfast food and let me just say, uh, we need to work on camera placement uh, <laughs> about how we're doing things, especially with people with uh, broccoli underwear, because I'm just seeing too mm. much. And it's right <laughs> in the center. It's right in the center of the frame as he's getting as he's getting breakfast. I'm like, whoa, okay. 
enough. Like slow your roll there, sir. <laughs> I need all that. I need all that. Uh, so you know, you get a confessional. She says, you know, this feels surreal. He has a lot of hope. For what's going on he's excited about uh getting to know her and get, how they get along day to day see what each other's buttons are uh and the real life of it all uh they're excited to talk to each other's families they want to hear what their families have to say about each other and their concerns and things that they should know about each other because you know, that's what we get every season it's, it's formulaic we get we get, gotta sit down at brunch with the families uh we talk a little bit about relationships he says his relationship his last relationship was a year and a half ago it lasted four years but uh, it was toxic towards the end. There was a reason that it that it ended, and uh, he brings out the secret weapon, which is therapy. Says <laughs> as soon as he said that, I was like, "Oh, Jason's gonna have a field day." Says, but I did go to therapy, so all good. <laughs> all good. Can we, can we establish that mm -hmm. if you're in your 30s, 40s, like therapy is has become a very regular thing? Like, yeah, we are talking about it. That's not a new thing. Like. It, stop using it as a, a like a hey here's a a, a green flag yeah. <laughs> it, it, it really it, at this point it should be assumed that people have explored therapy people have that they like they have spent time uh and it it should be more of the whoa you've ne like that should be more of the anomaly now that people aren't like ex mm -hmm. doing therapy yeah, I think you give people too much credit though, especially men. Uh, because sometimes when they be saying, no offense, Jason. Uh, but like sometimes Ow. when they say they went like to got, therapy, I, feel like I just got punched. Ow. <laughs> I often want to follow up the question with how long? How many sessions? <laughs> because like, <laughs> You're like one. One. <laughs> but again, it's like no matter how long or how many sessions, like that doesn't mean that it worked. It doesn't mean that like Very true. you're that's all true. fixed yeah. now. That's that's my problem. Like people bring it out like, ooh, I went to therapy. Looky, I'm all fixed. I'm all good. Like, no, that's a great point. that doesn't mean that you're fixed or quote unquote fixed. Um, and, and I do think therapy I, I I don't think therapy is as common as you two might think it is. Really? I think, okay. Yeah, I do think therapy is therapeutic people so what do <laughs> right. i do think therapy is somewhat of a privilege i will say that okay i don't think, I don't think everyone okay. has access to therapy um mm. so i don't think it's as common as as you might think it is um, and on that point jason just want to point out check your eap everybody if you have an employee assistance program please check okay. it out because <laughs> there are normally free therapy sessions normally six your EAP. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep yep so yep. if you don't if you're not sure what Jason is saying cuz Jason is making a great point check your EAP. Yes. Sorry, Jason. Check that thing. Yeah. <laughs> <Employees>. <laughs> what she just said. Yes, what she just said. <laughs> um, uh so yeah, I mean he's you know he pulls he pulls it. He's like, "Oh, therapy, I'm all good." She's like, "Good. I'm glad to know that you're all good cuz you went to therapy." Uh they they talk about uh they talk again more more relationship stuff. Have you ever, she's never lived with a significant other, but he has. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, I think that's an important thing. You really thing are know. driving this point home because this is the first of many times that we hear mm -hmm. this discussion. Right. And so I really wonder, is that going to weigh on them? Because there has to be a reason that we're hearing this over and over. I think it's an important difference thing, to know yeah. because like, that is a very different, they're two very different lifestyles of like, if you've ever shared space with anyone and if you haven't, that is quite an adjustment period. And they're not the only couple, too, I believe. Right. As yeah. Well, so like, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, One more thing uh -huh. before we get into everybody's like meeting a family, could this be improved? I get the point of them mm -hmm. individually meeting these these families, right? Because you want them to get their questions answered. You want the mm -hmm. family to get to know them. Mm -hmm. I think they could benefit from both being there because I feel like the parent the family has questions that like they're kind of wondering the dynamic they're wondering i don't know i feel like these families have no problem expressing how they feel about their their loved one but i feel like you might be apprehensive to do that if the loved one is there like you might you might not be comfortable to saying they need this or they need that when they're also there with you. So I think that's mm. part of it. My that's issue kind of yeah. Yeah, my issue with this is it's kind of a retread because we also do this during the at wedding. At the wedding, the yeah. Mm -hmm. So I you know, I think you could probably condense this all into that one wedding reception meeting and just cut out the brunch. Yeah. Cuz because the the point but it's different of people, the... right? They make sure Sometimes. it's kind of like it's different people. I think the point of it is like now that you've spent a night together what are you thinking of him? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 
I just don't feel like we've gotten much juice out of that. I don't like it. So, so how was the wedding night? No, <laughs> like <laughs> not many people would be like, oh, it was wild and crazy. You wouldn't believe right, it. Like, your, yeah. Yeah. They're just like, oh, we just went to sleep. Like, oh, okay. maybe they can do the wedding ones with them together talking to each side of the family. Mm-hmm. And then and then do the brunch separately. Because you're right, Asia. Yeah. It feels like the it does feel like the same. But I, I will say this didn't feel that bad. Um you know, I felt like it flowed really well. I was like, okay, the, the episode is going. It's going. Mm-hmm. You know, we got a little bit of the being green and honeymoon moons at like the last 30 minutes at the end. So it wasn't too egregious to me um, this time. But yeah, it's kind of like a, a like Love is Blind, how Love is Blind does it when, when they're both there meeting each side of the family. Yeah. Yep. Um, but I guess then you, you have that on the other side of the honeymoon with the friends and family. So... I think it's just, I think they just need it here to stretch. (laughs) Yeah, I I think I was just thinking, I think I thought of, I thought of it mainly when Camille and Thomas, Mm -hmm. um, because it felt like his brother really wanted to kind of see how Thomas is in this dynamic. Mm -hmm. Um, It felt like, I don't know, I just got the vibe that that they could have benefit like that all these families could benefit from seeing how the couple is together. Cause then they could say like, oh, I've Mm -hmm. never seen him vibe with someone this well or i've never seen her do this but i think it's better to get that when we go do like the the house the house visit the house party party because Mm -hmm. because then they've had a time to actually be like in a dynamic so you can actually yeah. kind of see how <laughs> really things are. fall apart in mexico <laughs> true uh <laughs> because like at a brunch they, they still barely know each other so you're not going to really get a great idea that the, the, the mm-hmm. dynamic because yeah. they're still just very very much strangers uh but yeah i see what you're saying because yeah. yeah yeah but <laughs> I, I found it interesting for madison and alan because they were talking about like she's like so what is like your normal like like thing he's like well when I go to meetings at when I go for meetings at work, like Zoom meetings, I I turn my camera off because I don't want to get ready for the day. Like he basically says, yeah. I, wear, I, I just wear this, my tank top and my underwear. I'm just like, I I was like, should you be saying this on camera? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what is Will he you about to say? <laughs> I just free ball. I don't wear anything. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, dude, he's gonna get a call from his boss. I'm gonna need you on camera for all <laughs> right. uh, now because just to know that you don't get ready for work is weird. And it, it feels like that is definitely not Madison's type. That is definitely not Madison's flow. I feel like Madison's the type of person that you're like, you gotta get ready like at eight o'clock in the morning for work, even if you're not going out, you gotta shower, get yourself dressed and ready, even if you're no, not I going t- out the door. Yeah, you were right. Like when I that first episode, I looked up her LinkedIn. Like she is successful, and she worked her way up very quickly. And so that's not the type of person that is in broccoli underwear. He's, he's like, I'm successful, but how do you get dressed for it? I, I, I'm <laughs> right. better than you are. I mean, come on, <laughs> I do it in less clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's just something about I, something about. Not getting dressed fully, like in a full, like what you would wear to the office, but at mm-hmm. least being decent to where if someone stopped by your house, you could answer the door. Like that, something about that and working just makes you feel a little bit more motivated. Like I can't work in bed. Like that's a hard, because mm-hmm. I work from home 100%, that's a hard standard I set for myself. I was like, that's the last thing I'm about to do is make my sacred space a working environment with my laptop. <laughs> well, Asia, so you, you're not just you're sometimes playing. like in like lounge pants and like, you well, know. No, yeah, la- lounge pants and a t-shirt. Yeah, like mm. I can I can answer the door like that. Okay. I can, yeah. but I can also, if I get on a call and someone is already camera on, I can turn my camera on and still yeah. be decent. If you get that panic, the, yeah. the, the Teams <laughs> notifications and you're like, <laughs> Right. <laughs> scrambling it's like alan bro I he's put on a shirt on. like you can't see like you can't see the bottoms when you're on camera <laughs> right. you I mean, have no idea what i'm wearing it's on happened being being on like internal calls where like so cameras are not up. mandatory and they're like let me see the pups <laughs> like, okay <laughs> Turn the camera. Yeah, that's that's your fault because like you made your dog celebrity. <laughs> now you got over self That's not on me. <laughs> <laughs> you made your dog celebrities. That's why they got. They want to see them. Uh, yeah. So we do get the brunch family and friends meetings. Uh, we get Madison meeting with his mom and a couple of his friends. 
Uh, of course, just talk about, oh, the night was so crazy. It's so, so, so ridiculous. Uh, Madison is trying to assure them she wants a partner out of this. This isn't just something she's doing for uh, for an adventure. She uh, she talks about how she has trouble finding people that want to commit and put themselves out there. And she knows that both her and Alan have the same goal. So that's why she did this. Uh, Mom, mom is a wreck. <laughs> she's like, I just want someone that's going to treat him nice and make him relax. <laughs> She's like, oh, I'm like, okay, love mom. Him. Love him. <laughs> <laughs> this might have been the point where I was with Madison, where I was like, oh, this is a lot. This is a lot. Say, y'all, whoa, this is an experiment. <laughs> yeah. There ain't no guarantees here. <laughs> Every two seconds, she's like, you know, we still gotta figure it out. <laughs> Everybody's I don't like, no, know him. Yeah, because I mean, Madison's in a, in a confession. She's like, I don't want to let any of these people down now because <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of pressure on me at this point. Because like, mom's over here bawling her eyes out. Like, he finally he found there, someone. You know? He finally did. And you're never gonna leave him, right? Never, ever, ever. <laughs> okay. Like, uh, <laughs> it's like we do not much. know each other. Yeah. I do want to be a realist <laughs> because because now she's gonna feel like. Not only is she saying no to him, she's saying no to this family. She's yep. breaking That's way true. too many hearts. And Madison tries to like, listen, uh, I know he's a dreamer, but I'm a realist. <laughs> so yeah. uh, we're both optimistic, but we have a lot to get through. I think she's trying to, she's trying to put in the work ahead of time. Like uh, this, this might not work. So prepare yourselves. Right. Like she's like, I want, I want y'all to, to be prepared up. if this doesn't work. Like, I want us all to be on the same page. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But if it succeeds, then we can all be happy. Yeah, there's no <laughs> hard feelings. Yeah. There's no hard feelings. It doesn't work out. Like, don't hate me. <laughs> right. Mom's like, too late. <laughs> too late. <laughs> she might as well say, remember, there is a decision day at the end of this. <laughs> yeah. Too late. You're my We're daughter three. forever now. Never leave me. Never break my heart. Yeah. Mm. Uh, he her. meets Let with... Her. Yeah, <laughs> he meets with her dad mm -hmm. and her brother and uh, her friend, I think, uh, and they, who is, you know, very, very upfront. Uh, he talks about how great it is to blend the families. Uh, they talk about kids. He wants two kids to two, he wants a kid in two years at the soonest. And then dad's like, glad you said that thing about kids. Speaking of speaking of, he's like, you know, before you two get intimate, I want to make sure that you're getting tested for STDs. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Sir, this woman is a grown ass woman. I'm sure she can take care of that. She can take care of the request for, for, so, for disease, uh, you know, disease. I was sitting here like, okay, dad, hurrah for you. Like, I, I get it. Like, I, I think he's, you know, he's not lying. You a stranger. Uh, STD <laughs> test, not a bad idea. But I was sitting there thinking, I was like, that should be a part of the math process to me. But it's not. Dog, that's not cool. Yeah, Why is been, it not? It's, it's been reported that it is not part of the process to get oh, STD. Oh, wow. My God. That that's should interesting. Be, that should be a part of the process. I am sorry. That that's like when you find out, like on the challenge, they don't give the um pregnancy test. The pregnancy <laughs> test. Yeah. yeah. There have been quite a few people that have been pregnant on that show and didn't know it until they Which were is... scaling a mountain in like Argentina. Like... Which is so ridiculous to me. That like, are ridiculous. you do you want a lawsuit? Like, mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry. I think wow. Well, good to know that he did the tests anyways. Yeah, because I mean, Alan does say he just had three weeks ago. Where does that put him though? Ago. Like mm -hmm. a week before he found week out, before. right? Mm -hmm. Alan's yeah. like, you don't gotta worry about that, Dad, because I haven't gotten none in a long time. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I've been clean for a minute, but he does mm -hmm. say, yeah, I, I did get tested three weeks ago, and we're all good there. Yeah, <laughs> Alan is so he's so taken aback by this. He's like, he's like, I'm pretty red in the face. Can you tell? He's like, yeah, yeah. So he's like, because uh, you don't get this every day. You don't get this type of a uh, question. From your, and from even when you think, oh, he just he just told her father he got tested three weeks ago. You think that'd be good? Or that, nope. uh, um, uh, um, make sure she sees that, <laughs> do you that have, paper. Do you have the paper <laughs> with you right now? Can I verify it? <laughs> she's gonna need to see that before anything happens. All right. Like that. I was okay, like, dad. oh shoot, right, okay. Dang. You did not take his word for it. That that dad is a, a shotgun dad. He, he is he's he's at I the door. It. 
He's in the rocket chair on the porch with the shotgun. Like, mm. oh, it came to ask for my daughter's hand, huh? Like, yeah, and he, he said, this he is like, my stopped, baby girl. He stopped all the fun talk to say, yeah, like, like, they were, like, they were chopping it up. Let's all the happy, let's call all the happy happy. Let's call all the small talk. I need to get down to business. He was, he was dead ass serious, too. He was like, he, was. he wasn't joking. He wasn't like, he wasn't smiling. He's like, nah, we gonna need those results, player. Like, I, know, I, I hear what you said, but I need some proof. Um, and I think what, I think what could well, I don't know if this is going to impact them, right? But I think it might be a little bit awkward if this, like, the first time Alan is talking about intimacy in the context of this relationship is with her dad. Like, I don't even think they've broached the subject. No. And, I mean, it, coming out of the mat is like, so here's my results. Uh, your dad's going to be this. It's um, like, whoa, we not there yet. Yeah, this is bro, an experiment. Yeah. <laughs> no guarantees. <laughs> You might not get none through this whole three, uh, <laughs> right. eight, eight weeks. We don't know yet. Hey. Um, and as, and as, as if that wasn't enough, Alan, Alan says to the friend, so like, am I like her type? Her friend's like, oh, no, no. Definitely she not. might as well like, have bust out laughing. <laughs> she you did. She laughed you, at her face. <laughs> have you seen you? <laughs> oh, my not gosh. You. Hey, says, hey, Alan. Is a fine looking man, Jason. Yeah, listen, no one on this panel is calling Alan ugly. We're not <laughs> no. doing that. Hear me clearly. Alan is a fine looking young gentleman. Okay. Uh, but if you I, ask Madison, if you ask Madison <laughs> and her friends, they will say, <laughs> <laughs> No, sir. No, sir. She says, She says, he, she usually goes for the pretty boys. Like, okay. It's like, mm-hmm. so not you. So she that's, that's basically what she says. She, she said, says, and you're what? the you're the complete opposite of that. Yeah, you're you're not that at all. <laughs> you're not that even a little bit. No one would no one would call you pretty. Um, uh, so and he's like, Yes, but 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 your personality won us over. So congratulations. So as soon as I saw your personality, then I was like, Okay. <laughs> you're you're ugly, but you're Good funny. Lord. You're ugly, but you're funny. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. <laughs> Oh, it's man, like I appreciate the honesty mm-hmm. because at least they're not just trying to like butter him up. But dang, yeah, <laughs> especially with the not elaborating. Like the right. fact that it's not until he talks to Madison that he gets finally a definition of what pretty boy is. It's like mm-hmm. okay, this probably stings for him right now. Yeah, especially the way that it was brought about. She's <laughs> like, she's like, no. you don't think so. Only because the the guys that she described, I was like, oh, like it it I, it was giving gym tan laundry to me, and yeah. I'm like, the, why after, would you want to be? Yeah, after Madison laundry. describes it, I'd be like, yeah, well, yeah I'm kind of glad I'm not that because that seems <laughs> exactly a little too much. But um, that's not what she's into. Yeah, but uh, but they do. The Madison and Alan do meet up to debrief. <laughs> he tells her, uh, "Yeah, your dad asked about my STD results," and her her laugh was just like, "Oh my god!" Like it's not it's not as if she put her dad up to this. It's like, yeah, he he does that type of stuff. She seemed a little embarrassed by it. She's like, "Oh my god, for real!" And he does like so. He he does ask her, "So what what is a pretty boy?" She says, "Well, it's kind of like an overly groomed, metrosexual, uh, super into the gym." Like very very clean groomed. shaven, very clean shaven. He's like okay, he's like he, he's a little a little more like calm down. He's like okay, I, I guess I'm not that, but I'm glad I'm not that. If it was me, I'd be like okay, I'm just a regular guy. I'm not super Jimmy. I'm not super like mm. I guess clean. So I, I think he's a little more calm down now. She does she does say there is some attraction there. She's like there's there's something there's just there's something there. She doesn't she's not like oh yeah I'm super into. You. She's like. There's something there. Like, Don't get this wrong. I can be around you. <laughs> I'm not disgusted <laughs> by you. Right. There, a friendship could be like is on the table. Like you're not my normal type, but not in a bad way. Not in a bad way. Like, it's just, uh, it's so, it's tough because it's like now I feel like it's a position where with, I feel like the perfect. Let me finish that thought. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's a position now where she is in the power position. It's a situation right. where she's in a power position. And that's mm-hmm. so annoying because then it's going to be like he's going to be having to like, look, no, we he's, he's trying to prove that why they're a good match to her because she's the one with the upper hand. And I'm just yeah, like, exactly. it just it creates such an imbalance way too early on. And there are some other couples where that definitely is the case, too. I feel like it's way better 
situation when they're more on an equal play and feel they're both trying to see if this is the situation for them. Not one person is like, you're for me, but do you know I'm for you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for me, like, I didn't know if I want to say it here or for later, but Madison to me is like, at first, I was like, okay, she, she's freaking out, but she's reasonably freaking out because there's somebody on this cast who isn't reasonably <laughs> freaking out. <laughs> Be- but I-, I felt at first, I was like, Madison, like their initial chemistry was so good that I was like, I, I think she's just doing that freak out where it's like, oh my God, this is my life type of freak out. Like that morning, the single life type of freak out. Now I'm kind of wondering if it's more like um if it's more like she's not used to be being treated well so she doesn't like it if that makes sense like I don't know it's it's definitely given giving I'm used to having to chase after these men who don't care about me so the fact that I might have a guy who who holds me up and and you know wants to be around me. It's kind of like making her not want to engage with him, type of thing. Yeah, because she was talking about like during the during the wedding and when she was talking to his people, she's like, he he pulled out the chair for me. Like he opened, he's opening doors for me. Like I've ne- I haven't had that. Like yes, wow, you've been dating some trash. Like so. I mean. Exactly. That like that is the dating pool it's, right now. You do have to mm-hmm. weed out a lot of that. <laughs> wow. Yes, it's, it's <laughs> like she's not used to like the good stuff, so she's just kind of like, "Is this what I actually like?" Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but maybe it's too early to tell. But I, I just like, I'm like, girl, want better for yourself. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I mean, it's like, be mean to me. Come on. Exactly. That's what it feels like. She's asking for. <laughs> like oh yeah. yeah so we get the all the, we get the whole where are we going for the honeymoon we get the whole uh we got all the swag the hubby wife robes and shirts mm-hmm. and we find out we're going to mexico for the honeymoon so we're all gonna get on the party bus we're all gonna head over to the airport and my first thought as everyone's get on the on the bus this bus doesn't have a luggage compartment. Why are we? Why are that was all, the most yeah. dangerous situation? That was, <laughs> yeah. that was yeah. shipped in all kinds of ways. We just pile the luggage into the bus. So we're all just everybody watch your luggage. legs. Yeah, it's like I guess party buses don't have luggage compartments on the on the bottom oh, of the bus or whatever. <laughs> that was just like one wrong turn. Somebody's somebody's suitcase is getting smacked in their head. Uh, mm-hmm. That was our first thought. Uh, <laughs> And you know, this is where everybody kind of gets to meet each other. We get to see each other's spouses and we get the, everyone's thoughts on each other. Everyone looks comfortable. I mean, except for one person. We'll talk about that when we get there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but we uh we land in Mexico at the resort. We do this cheers. I did not catch Madison's toast. I, I, I got it. I you got it. it. Yeah, I didn't I didn't oh, catch nice. the whole thing because it was a lot, and it was a lot of bleeps too. Okay. Mm. Here we go. Oh, okay. Here, uh, everybody get your cheers ready. Yeah. Uh-huh. Here's to the breezes that blows through the treeses, mm-hmm. lift the girls' skirts above the kneeses, reveals mm-hmm. the spot that teases, squeezes, pleases. Oh, bleep, free from bleep, <laughs> free from diseases. Here's huh. to the bleep down the hatch. <laughs> Cheers. 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 I guess I guess you know where Madison's dad got that question from. Exactly. <laughs> and I, she said this is like a. I, I'm guessing that maybe that's her her last name. She's like that's a Myers like original. Your family is saying this to each other before and you then, have a good time. And they're just asking for STD tests. It doesn't. It, it's not matching. It's not matching. <laughs> oh my gosh. So yeah, this family's very uh very concerned about diseases apparently. Uh, so we get the whole thing, or we get everyone sit down. Um. Madison Allen didn't they you know I think I think at this point Madison's just kind of like she's now apprehensive she's like yeah I just kind of I just kind of getting to know him now so you can tell the adrenaline's worn off I think from yeah I don't know at wedding. what point she has gotten some alone time between like right. the, you know but there has been a moment where she's come to this realization of like whoa mm-hmm. <laughs> what am I doing right because Alan's like, yeah, it's great. Like we are, we're getting to know each other. It's a really fun time. She's like, well, like, did she have know? a bad nap on the plane? That's what, I, right? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, what was, what made her do this 
this alone time take a step back thing like mm -hmm. that's what i really want to know it but you know we we won't find out till the tell all through number three or on <laughs> tiktok or something but it's just like like I mean, it, it seemed like they were doing so well and then all of a sudden she just like started to disengage and i'm like you know, in the past, it's like, oh, old text from is what old text from a boyfriend? Is it like, you know, did he say something weird to throw her off? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, you you never know. We've we've seen that on like other seasons. So now I'm like, now I'm like, my head is all like not not in like the innocent. You know, it's not something yeah. innocent type of thing. Like, was it something? Like, Crazy. did she get the ick? <laughs> yeah, it's like, where, like, yeah. from what? Like, what, like, you know. I mean, if those Brocky <laughs> underwear didn't do it, I don't know what, what could have done it. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, like, you know, like Jake and Haley after they had sex, and Haley was really like turned off after mm -hmm. they had, you know, like, I don't think it that's what happened with them, but I'm just saying, like, we've seen this like time and time again, like, where it's like all of a sudden something happens. And we don't know what it is on camera. And later we found out it's something else. I, I think it could be that there's such a there's such an adrenaline rush, I would imagine, during that mm -hmm. during that wedding day, that night, and then you wake up in the morning and you just you just like, what did I actually do? Like what does mm -hmm. this actually mean? Who actually is this person? I'm just wondering if it's if it's that. I mean, it's just the excitement yeah. has worn off from the wedding day, the night, all that. And she's now had time to maybe on that on that plane ride from Chicago to Mexico, she's like what have I, what have I done? <laughs> I have, I, mean, a, I, I, I have a new theory. I don't know what would be a good spot oh, to say it, okay. but I mean, you brought it up. So we're going. <laughs> I mean, I mean, well. okay. I know on the initial, so everybody, there have been previews that there's some type of like couple swap or something. And, uh, on the first episode, me and Mari were thinking, okay, was it David and Michelle, uh, couple swapping with, um, Camille and Thomas. Camille yeah. and Thomas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, after further evidence, I'm thinking it might be David and Michelle. And, um, oh, my headphone came out. <laughs> I'm thinking it might be David and Michelle and uh, Alan and, and um, Madison. Madison. I mean, I mean, David is Madison's like he is a gym rat, but she specifically said, or at least that's what they told us in the matchmaking. She specifically said she wanted a Caucasian exactly, man. and that's and that's why I think they showed us that because I would think they're yeah. showing us like, look, she said she wanted that, but look at her because I feel like of all the <laughs> <laughs> look at her, look at her, it's not our fault. It's look not at our her, fault. we came with a Caucasian <laughs> and she turned him down. <laughs> <laughs> what really stuck in my mind was we keep this is so there's so much stuff that these people say that don't make the cut. But right. the fact that we are on episode four and we have had to hear about David going to the gym every yeah. single episode and then we connected to her describing pretty boys as ones in the gym and spoiler alert for when we talk about David and Michelle David talks about how he used to do bodybuilding competition. So he cares a lot about his body. Mm -hmm. You see his hair, his hair is, has, he has had more hairstyles than most of the women this season. <laughs> <They've been playing. laughs> Luscious locks, Amazing. right? Amazing. And so I'm thinking this could be a situation. I don't know if it's a full swap because I, I, I can't yet see, uh, uh, Michelle what's her name? That's with David, Michelle, Michelle and Alan. I can't see that, but I could see, uh, Madison Michelle. and David. I can see Michelle. Well, she Allen. likes light skinned black men. Yeah, I can I see know. Michelle. Yeah, that's true. They're, both, they're both kind of boring, normal people. So I'm st I still am currently on the Camille Thomas, David, and Michelle switching only because um, it just popped into my mind on episode two, right? Episode two is where we finish the rest of the weddings, right? Mm hmm. I thought it was interesting that on episode two, uh, Camille and Thomas had already gotten married, right? But we didn't see their sit down. It was it was Camille and Thomas had gotten married, and then um, Madison and Alan were they were the the cliffhanger, I believe. 
Yeah, but we saw the remember. Camille Thomas sit down the, the episode after that. So that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So we went through Madison and Allen. I think we even went through Juan and Carla. And then they showed the Camille and Thomas sit down mm -hmm. right before they showed us David and Michelle. Like, I noticed that because I was, as I was watching, I was like, I'm like, we're seeing so many people sit downs, but we haven't seen Camille and Thomas's sit down. Yeah. Yet. And it was out of place to me because I was thinking like, they were the first to get married. Why didn't, why haven't we seen their sit down? And then I thought it was very interesting that we saw their sit down right before David and Michelle's, I think their, their, whole, their wedding, because their, their wedding was the one that ended that episode. Yeah. And I was like, editing are you trying to tell us something just, you know I get that see, edge in there I, I can only see the, the charlie scene. day gif of all the yep. of all the, the yep. red strings like now see they show they show the sit down here i'm was telling like, right you before, it was right so before, random to me like, I, it's not okay, a I, I, it's not a coincidence think about it think about it use your head because i i am so i'm right i have shifted camille and thomas to a close second mm -hmm. but this episode really made me see Madison as like, because we're we're saying what what changed? What if she saw David when they got <laughs> on the bus and said, when they, when "Wait they a get second. To, when they get to the apartment complexes after the honeymoon, Madison and David are, are always in the gyms together, and that's how they <laughs> that's how they like get their connection started like, like over gym don't... stuff." I, don't I was it. looking for that moment when I when that bus moment happened. I was looking. I was like trying to figure out everybody's looking like reaction other, to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now so you that's see, kind of Madison right now. Madison has seven letters in her name, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you know David has five. You do seven <laughs> minus five, five, you get two. One and one together is two. So yeah. Madison and David are together as two. You see, it's very you elementary. See the it's, evidence. Very, it's right you see here. It all. It's all yep. in front of you. You're and it supports house. it supports david's type he loves blonde. i was thinking that that's too. the only type that's the only type we're supporting though right no else <laughs> yeah, exactly. no, else. no there's a reason for that when, when she there's sat no. next <laughs> to him i did think that like on the bus i was like hmm. <laughs> she was sitting close to him the michelle was sitting to david that's for damn sure <laughs> and shout out I like, your name is escaping me i'm so sorry in the facebook group who did the comparison of David's voice and Common's oh voice and did them back and forth. And it was so good because that's exactly no. what I hear. It's still a no. It's still a no. No, I, no, I, I was with not. you. I, I heard it. I heard it. it mm -hmm. I mean, it's not. It, it, he sounded like Common. We got to figure out a way to do it on the yeah, what is, what? Why are you so against this, Jason? It's just, what oh do you God. hear? Common's so from Chicago, too. Common's from Chicago, too. So it's like, that's probably what happened. That doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah, two light skinned black men from uh <laughs> whatever. Whatever. <laughs> I, I still don't see it. I still don't see it. Um, okay, back to Madison and Al. We've uh tangent to the won't say why you don't see it <laughs> or hear it. <laughs> or hear it. it better. Hear it. I don't hear common when I hear David. I think it's have you crazy. heard common talk? Yes, and common has a specific <laughs> cadence to his voice that David does not have. I said he sounds like right. him. You're talking yeah, I, cadence. No, I, I didn't say they spot speak rhythm. I rhythm, 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 whatever that word Come is. Come on, you got it. Rhythmically, you got it. Yes. Yeah, whatever. It talks a little slower than common does, but it has the same <laughs> register in tone. Yeah. I don't see it. I don't mm -hmm. see it at all. None at all. Anyway. <laughs> Pass on that one. <laughs> Honeymoon dinner. They're sitting down to eat. She apologizes for being weird. She's just been feeling a little anxious now. Uh, he's like, so was there something I did to trigger this apprehension? She's like, no, no, everything was great. She says, but yeah, I sat down by myself and I just started to think about things. And I just know this is a lot. She's like, but I, I really just want to have fun. I want I want there to be excitement, dates, and romance in my married life. I just want to make sure that we're getting all that. I feel like this is the start of like a gentle letdown. <laughs> like, you're great. Mm. You're great. Well, let's just have fun. Let's just have fun during the wedding. Like, uh oh, that's the start of great things. I don't know if y'all noticed, but there were like ten drinks all around them at the, at the dinner. I was no, like, this, I didn't notice. I guess this is a cluttered table. <laughs> we're, we're, get, we're getting our drink on in here. Um, he says he thinks. Yeah, all inclusive. You get all the drinks you can. Uh, he says he thinks they are complimentary a lot. Like they have a lot of similarities, and he really wants to explore the relationship. He doesn't want to give her anxiety. He says, but I, he is kind of fearful to like hold her hand or you know touch her at all. 
uh she's like it's okay for her to hold hands you can touch the small on my back when we go into restaurants just don't try not to walk on eggshells around me um i don't want to feel like i'm pushing you away i, I am trying you i care for you away. yeah she's like I care for you i have a lot of respect for you if you have um, to specifically say you can put your hand on the small of my back <laughs> like what are you we doing here my hand i'm trying to think of the other couple that had that like i think you're uh uh jasmine was it Jasmine and uh, uh or J- Jasmine and Michael? Is that who you're thinking of? I think so. But no, was that I don't know. I feel like they no, had that no wasn't their... physical um, touch. But it's basically like so you're you're saying you're apprehensive about the situation. So you have a good man in front of you who is not going to press the issue because he man, doesn't want to Savannah. make you that well, that's the wrong context, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to the recap kickback if you want to know what I mean by that. Um, <laughs> um, but like, if if you're saying you're apprehensive and you're saying like you you know you don't want to be pushed, a guy who's listening to you is is going to be like, oh, okay, so he's going to watch what he does. But then you're like, but don't walk on eggshells around me. But ma'am. I, I don't want to make you uncomfortable. Uh, so it's just kind of like, it's this, you're, it's this self-sabotage that I feel like Madison, It I don't even know if it's a self-sabotage, it's a, it's a couple sabotage because she's throwing stuff in the air. He's like, okay, I'm trying to catch it. But then she's like, don't catch it like that. And he's like, well, I don't know what to do. And, right. I, and, and this is before this even happens. Like you could just see, the, see it coming. I, fi- um, I, figured, I figured out who I was thinking of. Uh-huh. It's from last season. Uh, Cameron, Cameron, and oh. his wife. Oh, oh, forgot his wife's name. I've erased uh, that. Yeah. I've erased that season from my memory. Claire, 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 mm-hmm. Claire. <laughs> Claire and Cameron. Um, yeah, that, it was kind of like that. Like, don't touch me, but also, like, you should want to touch me. Like, okay, and it, it seems like Madison is going to at any point be like, but you're not really take charge. You're not take charge kind of guy. Like, you know, well, we not doing this, we see you, in the preview. Yeah, she called yeah, him a pushover. Push, push, push over. So he's kind of damned if he does and damned if he doesn't. Exactly. Uh, so that's tough. Uh, you know, we get the we get a closing of them of him being like, you know, it's it's just going to get easier the more we talk, and it's going to take time to be comfortable with each other. And you know, they they cheers and they drink, and that was it for them for this episode. Uh, ratings, ratings, ratings. What are you guys thinking about rating this couple? Okay, last right. week mm-hmm. I was at a four. <laughs> and Jason was at a five. Oh, don't remind me. Oh wow, <laughs> <laughs> what a switch! And it, so, yeah, it's hard because I also think like it's like their rating is because of her. Like she's the one who's yeah. changed in the situation, exactly. and so it's going to be all dependent on is she going to be able to push past him not being her type. Is she mm-hmm. going to be able to let her walls down and actually see if there's something here? Mm-hmm. Um, it's just like before the honeymoon is way too early. Like we're it not is. even, they're not even expo- like the fact that she's already like, we don't know each other. It's so hard to overcome that hurdle. Once you start saying that. <laughs> exactly. Like, she's like, I want you to be confident while I tell you all of these things that will shake your confidence. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Like it doesn't make sense. Yeah. I <sighs> I'm gonna go a two for them this week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going back and forth between a two and a three as well. So it's like it's weird because it's like I think they have I think they could be great for each other, but it's like are you are they gonna get in each other's way? It, it feels very like Shaq and Kirsten of it all, kind of to me. Mm. Yeah, and so I mean, I, it's still early days, so I'll give them a three and hope for them to bounce back. But yeah, it's gonna be a three for me because I feel like we're nose diving right into the friend zone. Um, <laughs> it you know it's it's very much given a Clinton Gina of like we're gonna just stick this out to the end. You won't touch me. I won't touch you. We'll stay in different bedrooms, and we'll just ride this eight weeks out. And but uh, Clint and Gina, did they like each other? Like I feel like they didn't even like. They liked each other people. right, right up until this point, to the honeymoon, and then everything <laughs> just went <laughs> to hell. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna give them a three. I, I hope they can bounce back because they. I, I felt like the chemistry was really, really, really good. Was so good. And at the wedding, uh, so much so that I gave them a five. Um, <laughs> 
So yeah. I hope they can bounce back because I think they could make it work. But she just she's getting her own way here, like Mari said. Yeah. Um, and as man. a reminder, this scale is one to five. One think being we think they're not going to still be together by what are we saying? The reunion or decision yeah. day? The uh, reunion? No, decision day. Decision day. OK. One being we don't think they'll be together on decision day. Five being we think they're both going to say yes on decision day. No, I think we've been doing no. the reunion. Reunion? Did I say decision? Yeah, say yeah you did. Okay. Okay. <laughs> one yeah, being we, okay. One being we don't think they'll be together by the reunion. Five being we definitely do think they'll be together by the reunion. Um. So yeah, because they've been cheating too much. They all say they want to stay together after this. Mm -hmm. day. Right after. So we, we we're we, saying we yes, but that's a no to marriage, but a yes to <laughs> say continuing. yes to time. Yes to time. <laughs> yeah. It's like yes a break. Time. It's like a breakup with you off camera. Zach messed yeah. that up. <laughs> And everybody's been following that since then. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Let's move on yeah. to our next couple. Let's do it. Oh. Okay. Is that true? Is that who we're doing next? Yep. Yes. Carla mm -hmm. and Juan. Um, um, so we didn't get too much from them this week. Mm -hmm. um, but they were there. <laughs> so... We started off with uh, them like uh, waking up, you know, the morning after the wedding night. Um, he says, like, it feels really good to wake up being a married man. They said they cuddled a lot last night. Uh, we get a confessional from her saying, like, she's still in shock that she married a stranger, but she is really thankful that there's natural chemistry. Um, she told him that he's going to get used to like him spoiling her because he brings her her coffee. And then she's like, Hey, can you stir my coffee? So then he stirs her coffee. <laughs> and so that was, that was, that was like, Oh, is she doing this to be like cutesy or is this like, no, she's trying to get him used to his new life. <laughs> exactly. He's training. You would, you would training. <laughs> and you're going to be doing things for me. So yes. you get used to it now, baby. <laughs> Next thing she's gonna be like, I'm ready for my next sip. <laughs> keep it the keep it the cup up to my lips, please. Right. Is his um, name pepper or cinnamon? Because she's training him. She is training him, <laughs> baby. Dude, she's like slowly but surely. Her third eye is on it. Um, she she he tells her that he only drinks coffee on the weekend. So during the week, it's mainly orange juice and carrot juice. And she's like, Oh, I love all the juices. And he's like, Oh, okay, you got a juicer? And she's like, No, I actually buy all my juices. He's like, nice. oh, that's expensive. Juan strikes you as a type. And when we get home from the honeymoon, we're going to sit down with a budget. And, and you need to. Where her? <laughs> you need to. How, how much he said? He said, aren't the juices like $11? He said, he said like just $10. like 10 bucks. And the editing was fantastic. I love we go, We go to her to confess her like, they're actually 13, but I'm not going to tell him that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh good. I was oh, good. Done. That was so good. Oh, that was amazing. Cause it seems so like such a minor thing, but this says a lot mm -hmm. <laughs> about yes. how she's gonna handle money versus him. And she tells him, so remember how I told you money is energy? Bro. <laughs> Bro. I need to know. Get it off my hands. I need, I need to <laughs> here, take it all. <laughs> Juices are 13, take 15. Um <laughs> <laughs> but I need to know what Carla does for money. Me too. Much like much like Juan's dad. Much like Juan's dad. I need to know what Carla does for money. I feel like I feel like there may be an OnlyFans out there somewhere that she, she not told nobody about. Well, the really? sound bath OnlyFans. Maybe <laughs> yeah. she's an amazing saver. I think, she's told us she's not. I think she's told us she's not. She's let us know she's not. Honestly, she could be a TikTok sound bather. I be, you know, them lives and TikTok lives. Mm -hmm. and that. Sometimes True. they be getting me. I be like, yeah. scrolling, and, and like, I'm like, oh, thank you for the galaxy. <laughs> I've been here for 10 minutes. What is happening? I've been watching this live for way too long. <laughs> So I was like, I'm not sure. I, as she as she's scantily clad, doing sound baths, like I'm not sure why one's giving me money to do this. This is weird, huh? All I'm doing is the sound baths. As she like, you know, make sure she's moving a lot. Sound healer. So weird. Yeah, yeah, I love must, sound healing. All of a sudden, she has to be. I don't know. Yeah, maybe like her financial situation is way better than what we think. 
because she just it I, seems listen, like, she has three jobs so like yeah but she but she has this kind of la di da attitude of yeah. like a, money is energy that maybe means, if we saw money as energy we would have that same mindset I, yeah. That just means either someone is financing your life That's or you make too much money to like even care. And you, you know, what does the, her the, dad do? We don't know. Cause her dad is know. a man of mystery. He won't, yeah. he won't, he won't come on the camera. He won't right. uh, tell us anything about him. So I don't know what the dad does, but I could definitely see her being financed by her parents and like that's why she says money is energy because those of us that have to pay bills are not like <laughs> money is energy <laughs> like it's like it's not where we're at in life we're like money is a necessity that i need to pay my bills like i guess we uh throwing it out there on juices all the time <laughs> 13 dollar juices 13 buck juices we might yeah. need to track down her socials i i need, we need to, to dig on. in we need to dig in and figure out what's going on we need, we need to do our forensic, research what are we doing we need some, some oh, rent, yeah. forensic accounting around here about to, to mm -hmm. figure out what, what's what's going on with the money situation yeah so she goes and meets with his family um she asked them like what makes juan happy and they're like well um he appreciates the little things in life she's like you know he played the guitar for me yesterday and like she says she talks to god all the time right mm -hmm. okay i i heard another word instead of god i thought she said dad but it was <laughs> she did say god right it might be a freudian slip on your part Asia. i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i was like okay she says she talks to god all the time and asks and she asks for someone who plays instruments and sings to her and that's exactly what juan did yesterday so she was like that was perfect her dad said so what do you do to make money <laughs> dad, dad is dad is like madison's dad he's like yeah 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 whatever uh let's cut the chase <laughs> blah, everybody blah, blah. looked at him too like <laughs> like damn okay, okay dad <laughs> Jeez. so she says she's a hairstylist a pilates instructor and a sound healer he's like you feel good with that you love it <laughs> that's, that's, what you like? that's how you make money Man, I mean, he was awesome. Those are three jobs where you just kind of like hairstylist this, these days. You make like, your own schedule. You make your own schedule. If you need the money, you just maybe just book like back to back to back, then go off and travel somewhere. Yeah. You know, and Pilates, I, same I don't thing. know what the schedule of a sound healer is, but <laughs> I would imagine. Again, TikTok sound. That's, I think that's it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, so she says she started her own business two years ago and that, like yeah. that like um Juan also has started his own business. So they are they'll they're each building a business. Um and oh my god. She does say that she what? There might be an OnlyFans somewhere. <laughs> now that I think about it. <laughs> she said she does my want own business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She said when they do have children, she will want to raise them. So that basically is saying like she wants to have the time to be it's able like, to. It's good that you, when you have children, you want yeah. to raise them. Like, yeah. cut, cut, say what you mean. Like, I want to stay home while he works. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm planning to do. And again, I want to raise my eyebrow on her, but childcare out here is no joke. So yeah. I honestly, I don't blame her. If you can, I mean, if you can. If one income can satisfy the rest of the stuff, not having to pay that child care bill, which is like a freaking mortgage, I get it. True. His dad does say that he believes in 50-50 and like he has her opinion on that. And she's like, well, in a yeah. marriage, I think it depends, you know? And the mom seemed to like really agree with that. That was not okay. happening. That yeah. Was like I mean, that was like, I mean, if you say so. I don't, I don't know about that. Like, I don't know about yeah. like, you not working. Like, you have to, you got to be 50 50. You got to put in for this thing. He, she's, that like, was well, very he, she's like, well, if, if I want to be a gypsy in a jungle and he wants a mansion, we're just going to have to, you know, work that out. That's like, all right. And the sad thing is, I'm like, I, I don't think that those are like far fetched examples. I think she yeah. really could. Yeah. Play, like, like, I want to be a gypsy in the jungle. Like, mm -hmm. she, I can definitely see her doing that. Yeah. Um, he does go and meet with her family. Um, they ask him if he if he needs her to work. And he's like, at this moment, I do. Um, because like we both need to be contributing because my app right now isn't like making a profit. 
And so right now I need that. Um, and I'm like, well, do you feel comfortable with her staying at home if your app like takes off? I'm surprised somebody didn't go. So is that why you're doing this? Because you yeah. need a second income? Like, is, that, is, that, is that why you're here? Get ready for a site? He sounded like, I'm going to need her to put in her. <laughs> right. It's not popping like it should be popping right now. <laughs> like, but I'm then her income. family, her family's over here like, uh, but you're okay with her not working though, right? Like, right. we want to make like sure, <laughs> like, because that's gonna be they're, important. Hint, hint. They're like, uh, yeah, she does not. I think even at one point they said she does not expect to <laughs> to work. <laughs> she was only getting a job until she got married. Like now, it's on you, buddy. Why, yeah, it it, why it, it was start his own business too. You know what I mean? Oh God, <laughs> two together. <laughs> It was it's interesting because uh they were her and her family were definitely on the same page. Like mm -hmm. they know what she wants and they were trying to communicate that. So um they find yeah, everybody's going to Mexico on the honeymoon. Um she, and Carla's like, I was low-key manifesting going there. So my third eye is activated. <laughs> like she manifested all of this, but also Cancun is an amazing spot. Mm. Yes, yes. got to do it again. It is. Mm -hmm. Same. Because I went, the only time I've been to Cancun was for a wedding. Same. That was at a resort. And I want to go back to just like my own vacation. Exactly. With a whole yeah. bunch of friends. Yes. All right, JP Cancun. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. <laughs> That's our official pitch to Rob. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when, when, I, the, when the whole group got together and they were finally like in Cancun and kind of all talking. Uh, Juan said he's open to anything. He wants to respect her as much as possible. He says she's very sp spiritual and he's very business oriented. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought it was interesting because we'll get to them. We'll get to mm -hmm. EK Chi and MM. But everyone kept referring to them as like the couple who has it all together. And Juan goes, look, in two weeks, <laughs> them two could figure out everything isn't as great. <laughs> I, was, I thought that was hilarious. Foreshadowing. <laughs> <laughs> but also, why would you say that, sir? <laughs> why you call us out? Like, damn. Rude? He's like, they yeah. acting all happy. <laughs> they will figure You're out. Right. It's an <laughs> act, but <Yeah>. still. <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, Carla does say, like, right now is all about, like, seeing if they have enough to keep each other interested. Um, and I was like, ooh. That is that is interesting because I feel like she does seem like the type of person that does need to be stimulated in ways. She can get bored mm -hmm. easily. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so that when when life settles down <laughs> week three and week four of this experiment. <laughs> I mean, he's doing he's doing a nine to five and she's doing a whenever. Whenever. Yeah. <laughs> is that gonna match? Is that she's yeah. like you're always at work. Like, you don't you're never around anything fun. He's like, I have a job. Like I, <laughs> like what do you expect? She's like so I, I think, think that's she, gonna clash. I think she's just always ready for her next adventure. Yeah. And I don't know. He he's obviously like not he does not seem like that type of person. He like he yeah. says he loves routine. He loves a schedule. <laughs> he did say like, that. <laughs> so, um, they ended that with like a handshake. He did like a little off the cuff handshake, real casual. Here go EKG. Why we don't have a chance handshake? Uh, because the couples competition <laughs> is alive and well. It uh, is. <laughs> <laughs> so one has to be a winner. Um. It's so let's see. Oh, after the group all uh the after the group hung out. So we get this really awkward transition between scenes. And I was like, oh shoot, is this about to be a tense moment? Like usually when it's quiet, when we go mm. to, I was like, somebody is arguing. No, we hear his phone playing music. <laughs> and then and Juan is just like playing this music. He's like, yeehaw. She's like, oh, get up and dance. And then he's like kicking side to side. And she's like, I just, and in, in the confessional, I just love that we're creating our own morning routine. <laughs> <laughs> I think that may be as like fun as Juan gets is like <laughs> yeah. the other chance what they're trying to show us. around. <laughs> And I think she needs more fun than that. <laughs> his, his idea of fun is just spontaneously dancing because he's been doing it the whole time. Like it was so oh, funny. See how fun I am. I thought I missed something. I was like, wait, where, how did we get to spontaneous dancing? I was so confused for a second. 
I was like, did I There was no buildup. It, it wasn't. Happened. Not at all. He's like, see, I can be fun too. It's like, all right. I think that's our idea. Yeah, they, 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 they Almost kicked her in the face. <laughs> For real. Jeez Louise. All right. Let's rate them. Uh, Jason, what are you thinking? Where was I last week? Last week, you were at a two and I was at a four. Oh, yeah, you're at a four. I'm going to keep it at a two. Because I just, I just Why feel like so low on them? I just Thank feel like they're I feel like they're oil and water. They keep highlighting their in, immense differences. I just don't see it going well. It's kind of like for some reason they kind of remind me of Milton and Lydia, where it's just they're so <laughs> different that it like from Love is Blind. It, they're mm -hmm. so different that it works. Yeah. And like Milton just loves him so Lydia. And I and they're still together to this day, despite what everyone else yeah. thought. And I could see it being a situation that he's like, oh, she's out there, but that that's my Carla. I think I think for a Milton and Lydia, it wasn't it was their personalities were different, but I felt like their lifestyles weren't as different as Juan and Carla's seemed to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I think Juan and Carla have different expectations for a lifestyle. I think that's going to be a big barrier to success for them. Yeah, um, I. Oh, sorry. sorry no, go you. ahead. No, I do wonder, like, if they. Know, this is clearly Carla. Clearly wants to be a stay-at-home wife. Like. I really hope they picked somebody like one said at least at one point he didn't mind because why would you set set somebody up like this? You know what I'm saying? Like this we ask that all the time, don't we? <laughs> you're right. You know what? You're right. You're right. And and it's so opposites attracting. I don't know. I still I'm still kind of high on them. Um, so uh I'll give them I'll give them a three at least. Like I'm still, you know. Yeah, I'm sue me. But I'm going to maintain my four. <laughs> I will sue you. The paperwork's in the mail. <laughs> I know you're good for it. You can come up off a couple of those millions. Mm -hmm. I just think it's like, I don't know. I could, I just, I would, I wouldn't be surprised if they ended up working. I know that they are so different, right. but exactly. I think they could easily find a balance. Right now, it seems like they're coming from two very independent lifestyles. But it just seems like they at least have this foundation of being intrigued with each other. And yeah. that's a lot to ask on this show. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. I just think the show is hitting us over the head with, they are so different. Their lifestyles are so different. She doesn't care about money. He cares about money so much. She doesn't have routine. He loves routine. I just think it's going to be an issue when we really come down to it. Uh, mm -hmm. The preview for next week was... I, you know, you don't know what to read off of a of an edit. Uh, so it seems like they get into the conversation next week of like, I'm gonna, I need, I need you to want to take care of me, and we just see him saying, "Well, I don't have the money for that," or something, whatever he said. Yeah, of course, yeah. that's probably taken out of context, but we'll see what. Yeah, what happens. my guess is like maybe she goes into like, "Oh, I need you." Like, if I want you to buy a house, it, like it's an example probably mm -hmm. that he's like not, like he doesn't mm -hmm. have the money for, mm -hmm. not just taking care of her in general. Um, yeah. all right, let's talk, go to our next couple. Uh, another couple with not a whole lot going on this week, but we're going to go to Thomas and Camille. We get the wake up last night went pretty well. She's glad he doesn't <laughs> snore. Can we please talk about how Thomas holds the phone? Like he is in his forties. <laughs> like he had that you. camera, like this angle. <laughs> <laughs> like Camille, see, help him. We see in your whole chin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Asia, um, I, I speak for me and Mama Welch when I say you need to change yes, the picture. The, the picture, update the picture. Oh. <laughs> I'll get Mama Welch on you. There we go. There, there you go. go. <laughs> Thank you. I, I did that for you, Mama Welch. I did that for you. <laughs> uh. Yeah, so they, they both seem very happy. He says he, you know, he thought maybe he would get the worst case scenario that they're like, maybe not, they're not vibing. But he says, this actually feels like the best case scenario. Feels like I've known you for a long time. Uh, they get to the age difference because this is a couple that, you know, they are 10 years apart. So he asked mm -hmm. her, like, have you dated an older guy? She's like, mm, probably, you know, I probably dated a 41 year old. 
a year younger than him. She says, you know, I I like dating older people because it's the odds are better that you get someone a little more mature. Uh, in a confessional, he says, you know, the 10 year age gap is a concern because he wants family soon. Uh, he says, but, you know, for now, he's looking forward to getting to know more about her. He meets with her family. Tells about how much they had a great time. They got a lot in common. No red flags yet. Uh, sister, Her sister does say, you know, when she gets upset, she can get pretty defensive. Uh, so just keep trying to work through things. Don't shut down because she tends to get, get pretty defensive. He says he's going to try to, he tries to avoid conflict a lot and get silent. So they might clash because she's, she's defensive. He just won't talk and that can build resentment. Yeah. Um, her, her dad is like, her dad says, you know, when things get tough, how are you going to act differently than from your past? Right. He's, he says, you know, I put in a lot of work on myself, been to therapy. <laughs> <laughs> the therapy so we're all good right uh he's done a lot of work he says he, he respects marriage he knows it's not something that you go into lightly uh her sister does tell him you know she's really counting on this so but how do you know that you are ready i feel like we go i feel like this conversation is like very repetitive he says, mm -hmm. he says you know i've learned to really communicate better he's like i've learned not to keep thoughts to myself and you have to be open even if it's scary and you think you're going to be judged dad's like listen I like you. You seem to be taking this seriously. He says, you know, but that is my girl, my baby girl. I do have large expectations for you. So I need to see that your intentions um, are there for, for both of you. Uh, I like what I see, but, but my guard's up. Dad says his guard's still up. And Thomas does ensure him that he's going to earn his trust. Dad's, Dad's like, I'm watching you. I'm watching you. I'll be there. Uh, we get the Camille meeting with his family, uh, his brother, his twin brother's there. Uh, his sister-in-law, who is married to the twin, is there, and his mom is there. Um, they say, uh, notice the the bio mom did not get invited to this brunch. <laughs> Interestingly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, she talks about how well they fit together so far, but they do have personality differences. She really wants to bring him out of his shell. Uh, his his brother does say you're going to need to push him a little bit. Uh, he does have some triggers. He doesn't like harsh criticism. When he gets mad, he can go be by himself a little bit. So you got to make sure that you're you're really pull, pulling that out of him. But he is a good listener. He's very receptive. Um, Camille says, that's kind of like me. I'm the receptive one of my family. Uh, so we're both kind of like sponges. It'll be interesting to see how they pour into each other. I've heard that a lot. Pour into each other. That's such a odd... <laughs> It's such an odd it's phrase I've always thought. It's the new like, thing now. Yeah, yeah. Like, feel yeah. like I just cup up. You have to pour into yourself before you can pour into other people. I literally said that, like, last week. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's new, thing. new age nonsense, if it's you ask therapy me. therapy term. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, apparently. Uh, her sister asked, so how are you going to approach, like, some of the bad habits? Like, how he eats. <laughs> Camille says, I don't oh, care right. about how I, I like this for Camille. She's like, I don't care how you eat your food. Like, doesn't why would I try to change that? I don't care. She's yeah, like, what? do you do your thing? I don't care. What do I, I care? need to know when has this caused an issue right. with Thomas's brother and sister-in-law? They keep for they keep for them to up. bring yeah. up the way he <laughs> eats. I'm so sick of eating one thing at a time. You know, mix it up. Like just they, they, they like, touch the food, mix it all together. Like now you know. <laughs> it's like unless you're smacking, like I don't care how you like I don't really... care what you're doing on your plate. Yeah. I got my plate. Yeah. Yeah, like mind your own business. Mind your own plate over there. Uh the brother asked her about her past relationships. She says, you know, she has had issues in the past. Um, uh, but she's she's been such a bad picker, she wanted someone to pick for her this time. Yeah, this worked so well in the, <laughs> the previous 17 seasons, but okay, whatever. Uh, the, the topic of kids comes up. She says she probably wants kids within the next two years. And you know, his mom is very happy about that. She's like, oh, my God, that's so great. Because his brother is like, yeah, I wanted Tom to give us a kid for a long time because I want my kids to play with his kids. And uh -huh. I, I don't know how old the brother's kids are, but he seems pissed. Right. He's like, he, he's <laughs> deprived my children of a I have a cousin to play with. <laughs> uh, so everything goes well. She gets mom's seal of approval. Everything's good. No real, no real issues. Did anything else stand out to you, to you two about the meetings? I can't remember what she said, but she said something that I was like, "Oh right, she's young." Like I think that might be something like down the line. Like she said something that I was like, "Oh yeah," like she's. I mean, she's she's younger 32. than me. She's That's 32. what I'm saying. 
But that's what I'm saying. Not like she, 22. No, no, no. I'm saying she's young. I should say, like, in, in comparison to him. To like, him. I, yeah. It like, was when he, for me, that moment was when he said in a confessional that the 10 year age gap concerned him. Because I was like, right. oh, I didn't know he thought about it that way. Mm -hmm. Um, and I wonder if he, like, does he think there's going to be like a difference in like readiness for this or a difference in like things that they have in common? Like, I wish we got more That's context what to what he was concerned about. The, the in common thing. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> and I really wish I had wrote that down, but she had said something and I was like, oh, that's funny. She's with it. Oh, I mean, <laughs> it's it. Like, I don't know. Like, mm -hmm. like so I mean, 10 years is, is, is quite a gap. You have totally different cultural references, uh, you know, so it's going to be something to, to think about, but I do, I do feel like their maturity levels match. So I don't think it should be that big of a deal, but who knows? Y'all think that she's going to cheat on him for some reason? I the way like, around. Come on. <laughs> Do y'all not? Did, did y'all not say? That Listen, that's all speculation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you still think it? <laughs> I don't, why she got? Be, he's the cheater. He could yeah. Remember, we didn't her. think David was the initiator. We thought it was him and Michelle. Yeah, we thought Thomas and, and that her and David well, were still gonna have to settle for each other. One of them will have to cheat on someone, right? Right. That means I um. have suspected he <laughs> would be the cheater because he has cheated in his past. Either way, either way. No, it's not either way because either you're way. saying that we thought she would cheat. Yeah. <laughs> But you just think he's gonna cheat. I mean, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, he's the cheater. <laughs> he's that he cheated. That was like 12, it was like something 10 years ago. No, okay. Let it go. Let it go. Listen, I am very he excited. <laughs> I'm excited to see her with the other wives because I feel right. like we're gonna get way more get to know her way better because I, I feel agree. like in the context of this relationship, yes, she is the one with the more personality and I feel like it's she's kind of trying because she's spending so much energy trying to bring him out of his shell. We're not getting to see what she's like. And I feel like she's like a cool person. Mm. Uh, and so I'm really yes. interested to see like once the wives start hanging out in Cancun, mm -hmm. what we're going to see, what, what thoughts she has about this relationship also. Um, but just to see more of her as a person. I feel like she's going to be I that agree. good friend to all the other wives. Mm -hmm. And spoiler alert for my like thoughts on the ratings. Like I feel like Camille and Thomas are going to be solid the whole way through. And I feel mm -hmm. like she's going to be that person that all the other wives go to, to react to their nonsense because yeah. Camille's going to be one of the, like one of the stronger couples. Uh, I feel like that's going to be her role to be like the sounding board for all the other wives possibly. Yeah. Um, uh, mm -hmm. But we do, we get to Cancun uh, before Cancun, we were packing and uh, Camille's like, Camille pulls us a lingerie. She's like, <laughs> yeah, Hey, cute. why you partying up on this honeymoon? Who knows? And he's just like, I got some boxer shorts. <laughs> like that's that's, that's <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Is it? Okay, that was so Thomas. Cute. Yeah, Ooh, like see us. Thomas, yeah, Thomas come out of his show a little bit. I like that. Yeah. Uh, we we make sure we pack the condoms because you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we get to Cancun and on the whole little group sit around. Thomas talks about the fact they have great chemistry. He says he didn't believe in love at first sight before, but this is actually starting to change his mind. And he feels very safe with her. Uh, and, you know, he's ready for that one-on-one -on -one time with her. I was like, okay, all right. So, I mean. That was cute. Yeah, and that was that was pretty much their episode. Yeah. Um, how do y'all feel about ratings? For me, it really is. It's like I, I either need them to be, like you said, that solid couple or I do want to see the swap. Like, I do want to see the swap. <laughs> no like, in between. No in between. <laughs> like, no, no in between. <laughs> um, but yeah, like right now, and I keep trying to think of what we saw from them from the, like the, the this season on. And it's we like we, bit, we didn't see Not anything. Yeah. I remember we said that. So I don't know what that says. So, uh, but through through these through these uh four episodes i i'm digging i'm definitely digging what they're what they're putting down here so i'll give them a four you know right for as of right this very second mm -hmm. if they yeah, don't last... get caught up in the shenanigans <laughs> right yes be just innocent bystander saw the foolish <laughs> um last week jason was at a four and i was at a three uh mm -hmm. so this week i'm actually going to go up to a four i think they're solid right now i think um unless I think it would have to be, I mean, at, it would have to be a situation where, um, yes, either like if the swap thing is a thing, but I think he seems very into her. And then, so if that's the case that like X is out, my 
my thought yeah. there because I was thinking, I didn't think she would be the one to step out. Yeah. So I think in that case, the because they were another couple that came to mind with the imbalance because I kind of thought like, with what I saw this episode, it seems like she has the upper hand with trying to see like, is he the guy for her? Where he's mm-hmm. acting like she is the girl, like the woman for him. Hmm. So, I mean, but but yeah. that, all that to say, I'm, they, I'm at a four. They seem a little bit more equal to me, though. At yeah. least, like they're both in, like they're not completely like all the way in, but not mm-hmm. out type of thing. Yeah. Like they both seem like really invested at yeah. the very mm-hmm. least. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna give him my full confidence vote here. I'm gonna give him a five. I oh, I feel wow. really I feel really really good about them because, mm-hmm. like Mari said, they seem to be equal in both like temperament and personality. Mm-hmm. Neither of them are too high. Neither of them are too low. I feel like they're both right in that middle sweet spot where they're not they're not deluding themselves. They're not also like they're not pessimistic. They're like okay, like I like you. Like that's the first step. Like we like each other. Mm-hmm. That's like number yeah. one step. I feel like they have that. They have a little bit of chemistry. I feel so. I, I think I'm gonna give them. A, I'm gonna give them a five here. So I, I feel really good about them. For okay. them, their first test is gonna be their first fight because I think that's what it's it, it's gonna come down to, and not the whole like, oh my god, like the Nicole and and Chris, like we have nothing to fight about. Are we gonna fight? Mm-hmm. Like they're not giving me. They, they won't ever fight vibes. It, they're giving me like they will fight. Now will will their fighting styles um and then communication styles be able to get them back because yeah. it's never good when one person goes off to slink slink off into a corner you know what i'm saying and and you don't talk it through so like yeah, uh, they both, like they both might saying. be they both might be slinkers they both, both exactly. might be off to the corners so we'll never talk about the issue yeah that that might not be good yeah so yeah that that's that's what i'm wondering about is what that first fight is going to look like so, yeah, and it, and if they're both slinkers, it might take at least six fights before they somebody blows their top type mm-hmm. thing. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So we'll see. Uh, let's go on to the next couple. Oh, not them. Uh, <laughs> Ikechi and MM. Um, how do I describe these two? <laughs> Oh, brother. Um, They're like what happens when you you have like a casting call and you say, I need somebody to play a wife and somebody to play a husband. <laughs> no need. Don't you don't have to get to know each other. Just just play the role. And we're going to we're going to drop you in this group with actual people that are trying to get to know each other. Keep, keep calling each other husband. Keep calling each other wife. Yeah. Like, use those words all the time. How mm-hmm. are you, husband? I'm doing good, wife. I swear, if I was a, if I was around this couple, they would get on my nerves so hard. <laughs> like, you can you can tell it like what week we're getting. I think Juan definitely group. picked up on it. Juan <laughs> <laughs> was, Juan was like, exactly. this is some BS. Because <laughs> he because Juan could have easily said, like, any of us could find out in a couple weeks, like this isn't our person. <laughs> He was like, you two, <laughs> you're going to fall apart quick. <laughs> this is going too well too soon. Yes. And all of us at home are like, well. <laughs> you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Yeah, you're not oh, wrong. my gosh. Um, but like, okay. Just being around and be like, how's it going, wife? <laughs> going great, husband. Like, oh, it, it, like, <laughs> yeah. Here's the thing. I get it. They're both very excited to be married. Mm-hmm. The only She's thing- just excited. He feels more performative, and I, I just no. I, I think he's excited to be like I. <clears throat> I don't think it's a matter TV. of yes. I think he's excited yeah. to like. Okay, yes. he's he can say he's married. Mm-hmm. I don't okay, think he's yeah, like yeah. necessarily like. Okay, now MM is my wife. Now this is the target of my affection. Exactly. It's more so. Okay, now I can back up all that stuff I was writing because I'm a, I'm a husband now. And you guys did a great job talking about his poetry and all that stuff last week. Like, what do you mean? No, she can't see the letters that you've been writing. No, no, nah, nah, that's what it comes to. Now, like, now I'm wondering, did he actually write these letters? Right. Did he no evidence. You, you girl, you can see him when you go buy the book. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. So. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> they wake up the morning after their wedding and he's like, wait, so what is it? Is it good morning wife? Uh, is that what I said? Jeez, <laughs> gross. And she's like, mm, yeah, should I say husband? Like, what? <laughs> and so, whew. and so they get their breakfast. Uh, she's like, wow, we got married last night. And then they're like, okay, so like, what's, what's it going to be like when we go back to work? We have to be like, yeah, you know, so my wife said this, my wife said that, or, oh, Jesus. I got to, you know, go to my husband. Yeah. And they're just going to be like, wait, when did that happen? Where did that come from? It's like they're reading from a script. It honestly <laughs> really is. It really is. is. Yeah. <laughs> I want to like them so bad. Like, I... I would love to be like they are such a good match. Like, look, I but we're not, they're not getting to know each other. At, at least what we're seeing, they're not getting to know why this person would be a good partner for me. As opposed to, I just filled the husband position. Perfect. I filled the wife position, <laughs> and we're yeah. together. It's like, is this a a business merger? Is this like a like a contractually obligated relationship? Like, did y'all PR? Uh, yeah. People put y'all up to this. Right. Like, what is going on? We said that about her in like the right after the wedding when she's talking to people about like, yeah, you know, I'm just so busy. I don't have time to date, so I just need to. I I just basically needed to fill the role. Fill yeah, the, like right. I had to put some applications and get a get a husband just because I don't have time to actually do the dating and stuff. So just give me a husband that's already prepackaged. Yeah. Um, so he talks, he, she slept great last night. He talks about how he uses the gym in the morning as like his coffee. Cause he doesn't drink coffee. She's like, okay, I don't either. I think they both don't drink coffee. Um, but he's not the type to be all excited in the morning. Like, good morning, whatever. He's just like, he just goes to the gym to kind of wake himself up. Um, and he said before they met, he was worried that like, he wouldn't be enough for her. Uh, but he was like, you know, like there was a moment last night that our skin touched and I was like, Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> he's um, like you know we didn't do anything and she's like yeah we didn't do anything but we still connected so they definitely I, did something I, they definitely did something maybe yeah. i'm naive i didn't think I, did, I was like oh they did it she said we physically connected she did say that and it was too mm. doth test too much i mm -hmm. yeah they yeah, definitely did something they're, they're my leader mm. in the clubhouse for did something <laughs> yep <laughs> Um, and so he, he does say he really doesn't want to go leave to go meet her family and friends only because he just doesn't want to leave her. Jeez. My eyes, don't, <laughs> my eyes don't stop rolling when they talk. I know. I can't, I'm trying not to, but it's just like, y'all. Okay. Cause it, here's the thing. It feels like they would be saying this no matter who they were saying this to. You could have exactly. dropped any person and they would be saying that same thing. It would be so different if it was like, I'm saying these things because of who you are. But yeah. it's like, no, I'm just saying these things because this is what I would have said regardless. Yeah. And I, I do want to say, I do think Ikechi has um, made it so MM feels a little bit safer with with safer with him because like I like how in the in the first few episodes she kept saying like please just give me a man who wants black women <laughs> like mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying I, you could tell that was her biggest fear and I think he's done a, a, a great job of allaying those fears but it still feels just like you guys want to be top couple you want that you want that trophy you guys were all everybody was overachievers and, and now you want to you want to show everybody that y'all are the the big dogs in the roost and it's it's like giving not gonna end well alexis and justin in their early days mm, like they were yeah. trying to be the best couple on the honeymoon <laughs> make sure they're all over each other at all times yes yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um so he meets up with her friends um and uh he was like they, they were like you know they were greeting each other and he's like you know i'm they all said that they were tired he's like i can guarantee you i'm more tired than y'all that was so weird. When he said that, I was like, <laughs> No, no, I'm that? way more tired than you are. Like, bro, <laughs> like, this is down. not a tired competition. Yeah, calm down, so man. Weird. Like, it's not, not that serious. Yeah. Uh, but then they were like, you know, we we're you know, we we're all married and you know, we're used to waking up married. So how was that? <laughs> it's like, you know, it was new. 
He's like, she didn't wake up. Like those alarms just kept going off. And I was like, are you going to wake up? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, They asked him what made him want to get married. And he said he's had this desire for a while. He was engaged 12 years ago. That was his last relationship. But he did sabotage the relationship. And he realized. When you say 12 years, let's say, what is your definition of relationship? I have to wonder. He was probably in a lot of situationships. Because he is, what is he, 41? Yeah, he's uh, I, one of the older ones. Yeah, I think I, he is this 41. I thought he was like 37. Because he said, he mentioned that his last relationship was 12 years ago, and he said he was oh. 25. I thought we had two people in their 40s. No, I think he's 41. Um, yeah, maybe. Yeah, he's 41. Because okay, oh, yeah, yeah. the guy did say he was in his 40s last time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so... Um, he what what was I getting at? Oh yes, twelve years ago. I think because of his age, he may consider a relationship only something that was like long term, heading towards marriage. Mm. Maybe because mm-hmm. that's a that's a very large gap. Like if I you, if you say you were in no relationships for twelve years, I would look at you and be like, so then you thought it would be wise for your next relationship in that twelve year gap to be to a be marriage. marriage? Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, eh, for sure. not math. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's true. Uh, he said he hurt someone and it was a mutual decision for them to... Did he use the word divorce? I don't think he did. He, I think I don't know. Okay. Because no, no. I usually write down... Like when I take my notes, I usually write down verbatim like what I'm hearing. I wrote divorce, but maybe... Because I'm like, they weren't married. So, okay. No, to break up. Like- so he mutually ended the relationship. So basically, you cheated mm-hmm. on her. She said she's breaking up with you. She you said, like, I'm done with you. You're, you're like, you're <laughs> right. We are it's done. like, bet. You got yeah. it. <laughs> we uh, done. And, you're right. And, and then they were like, you know, so why, you know, why haven't you been in a relationship for 12 years? He's like, he just found himself s- stopping getting further. Like, he found himself stopping himself from getting further in any other relationship. Um, and didn't he say, when I think she said, what did you learn? And he's like, to to take them at what they show you. Yeah. And, and then he said, he basically called his ex crazy. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, well, that's he's a like, that's he a said, you know, believe someone when they tell you something. He's like, and he yeah. used the example, like when someone tells you you're crazy, don't say, oh, you're not crazy. And then when they are crazy, like, oh yeah, you did say that. So it just, it leaves a lot of room for like, for him to interpret things of like, mm-hmm. well, she said she was this and then she did this and that showed me she was this. So I'm like, hmm. I don't know. Taking no accountability None. Um, yeah. in his, his role in these relationships. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. He has no energy to waste on nonsense. Um, so I didn't think this was like a great meeting. <laughs> I don't feel like his friends walked away like that's that the way for her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean the 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 uh the, in these. <laughs> the friend did bring up the fact that he tried to be on the show yep. before. Yeah. And, and why, like, is this like she pretty much put it out there like, is this real or is this like an opportunity for you? And he totally mm-hmm. zoop, sized up the question. <laughs> he like, just was like, you, you know how hard it is going through this process? Oh, like, yeah. Opening yourself yep. up to be vulnerable. He sized up that question like it was he like, did. like he it was did. nothing. Like, yeah, he's, he's like, okay, had, because had, they. It was a lot of homework. <laughs> right. Yeah. He said it was a lot of homework, which is like, okay, yeah, because it's an extensive process. That doesn't mean. That does not take away from what she's trying to get at with her question. Like, <laughs> yeah, he literally, like, way. he literally was like, I'm not trying to shade your question, but like, he li- like no, he verbatim said that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he's just like, he's like, I'm gonna take your question, I'm gonna put it over here, and I'm gonna talk about what I want to talk about. So uh, yeah, so, so I, don't, I'm not I can't ignore that. We may be seeing a FaceTime between MM and her friend <laughs> later <laughs> in the season when she's annoyed with him for something. Um, she met with his mom and his friends. Um, MM said they she, like they passed out. She went to sleep, sleep. Um, she learned that he is an early riser. Uh, his, his friend said like, okay, he's an author. He's popular on social media. So how, like, I'm just going like, to say it. How you going to deal with the ladies loving him? What? Uh, yeah. It sounds like, it sounds like the friend has, uh, a, it sounds like the friend uh, has fed into the same <laughs> Same stuff that he has believed about himself. It's mm-hmm. like he's so famous on social media. How are you gonna deal with all the groupies all around him? It's like, yeah, I need to check his followers. That's okay. what I I literally you took the words out of my mouth. I was like, like he got it like that. Where is he at on social media? He's, he's, uh, like, he's famous. He's he's popular on social media. I was like, okay, 
It's a weird. He's at eleven thousand, and his his account is private. On Twitter? They always are on Instagram. Oh, but that's enough to be like, yeah, worry about them groupies out in the streets. <laughs> and so his book is called "To My Future." Hashtag WCW. So wait, the book is already out. It it says author of. To my future WCW Woman Crush Wednesday. Oh, he was ready for this. He's like, I gotta make sure this book is out by the time this show comes out. <laughs> to my future. Oh yeah, you can order it. It's twenty dollars. Wait, but she couldn't read it. She, she can read, read it if she buys it. Copy of a book. She can read it. Spelling. She can read it if she buys it. Okay, you you a customer just like everybody else. So oh, you know we gotta we gotta gosh. go petty cash and get us uh, one of these books, right? And read them on the podcast. <laughs> Dave, I'm wow. him. $20. If we put our money together, oh, we no, order our, book. our hat, petty cash. They got, they got it. In there. <laughs> not <laughs> paying that man for get a <laughs> Rob for 20 bucks. his wife. Right. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay. Well, that's very interesting. Um, so, so she, yeah, she, yes, his friend is like, well, how are you going to handle all these women loving him? Wait, she was mm-hmm. like, look, he's going to make sure that I'm secure. I really like, <laughs> like that. That's answer. his job. I did too. I was like, okay, MM, that is a perfect answer. Because it's right. She, like, if she feels mm-hmm. secure with him and he is validating her, and like if she feels secure in that relationship, she has nothing to worry about with someone recognizing him from Instagram. All right. As long as exactly. he's not doing something crazy, yeah. I don't got nothing to worry about because I should be able to trust him not to do nothing crazy. So mm-hmm. exactly. But also <laughs> people throwing themselves at him. <laughs> are they though? Yeah. Like, are they? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't is, know. That a, is that a real problem in his life? <laughs> like, let's keep it real. Uh, I thought I was like, um, friend, do you want to get with him? Should I be worried about you? Like, is, that, yeah. <laughs> is this a problem? Because uh, that friend was like, he is so he's so popular. He's like, so like, okay, maybe you need to stay away from him because I'm worried about you now. And now I don't I don't know. I don't know. It's like I I don't know. I don't know. So <laughs> I think you might not know. Yeah. MM asked, like, why is he still single? Like, clearly the friend just hyped him up, talking about mm-hmm. he got all these women. If he has all these women being thrown at him, or all these women throwing themselves at him, why why is he why did he have to go this route twice to find a wife? Yeah. <laughs> uh and so they said, well, and they call him Ike, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. They say Ike is looking for a unicorn and his friend is saying like he is looking for perfection. And these two comments stick mm-hmm. with her. More yes. than As they should. Yeah. 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 I mean it is it is a pink 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 flag for sure. That's a red flag. That's a bright, <laughs> yeah. that's a bright red flag. <laughs> it yeah. is cuz you can't expect perfection from anybody. Yeah. Um and so let's see then they go, they, they get back together to debrief from meeting each other's families. And so she said, like, okay, lunch was good, but I I, I did learn a lot. He's like, you scared yet? <laughs> like, <laughs> she's like, well, I heard you're looking for a unicorn. And he's like, I mean, who's not? <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> it's like, okay. She clearly expressed this as a concern. And you're like, and <laughs> you're like, why not? Right. Yeah, girl, put a horn on your head. <laughs> yeah, and then didn't he say, or like some other uh different creatures? <laughs> like, I was like, what is happening right now? Right, he she said her ears perked up when he said, when they when she heard that he was looking for a unicorn or, or perfection, he was like, well, look, I look at it as like you know. Lego pieces trying to fit together, no matter the size. He, he might, he, I'm surprised he didn't like look right into the camera, it's like. <laughs> Everyone's different Lego. He's piece. like, which one is on? Yeah, we're at light over here. Everyone's different Lego piece, and they all yeah. fit together, right? It's just oh, about shit. do our Lego pieces fit together in a, in, a, in the same universe, in the same spectral plane as we, we as each other does. His friend for more gems like guitar. that. For more gems <laughs> like that. Check out my book. <laughs> to my future, future woman to crush my Wednesday. Future woman crush Wednesday. Honestly, that's exactly what it is. I, is he coming for Pastor Kyle's job? Do y'all need a warrant? <laughs> right. We well, I'm, 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 I'm next expert. I'm next expert. 
<laughs> he crazy. said he knows he says perfection is impossible to find and he knows that he's not everybody's cup of tea but he he's like but I'm, I'm i'm looking for something that's dope because who wants regular <laughs> which is how he sees it as it's it like it the point the point is I get what he's saying, right? Like he's trying to find something amazing, but he's just trying to find the perfect person for him. They don't have to be perfect, but his delivery oh. and translation of it is Very off. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. He has um, no. He obviously has very very high expectations. Yes. That yes. Probably seem a little lofty for anyone. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be a problem. Especially because she says to him, I hope that you see attributes in me that you Ooh. like and like, where you're like, this is my wife. And this was, I was like, oh, another M -M. one. <laughs> Stand yes. up. <laughs> another one where like he's in the power position now and she's mm -hmm. going to be trying to show him, look, I am that perfect person for you. Yeah, but it's like, girl, decide if he's for you. Yeah, exactly. Damn. Um, yeah. And so he said he can see, see success with her. Uh, they, they, they're packing for Cancun. He's excited for balcony activities. <laughs> I mean, look, listen, it sounds like a couple that has already done some stuff. I'm telling you. And he's ready for more stuff mm. on the balcony. I, yes, exactly. Well, me and Jason uh, are here on them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look, in the confessional, he did say, I want to bask in the M. And if something happens on the balcony, something happens on the balcony. What is what? You, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Have at it, sir. Okay, maybe, I, maybe I'm on board y'all's train. I don't know. I was just <laughs> thinking, like, maybe, like, I don't know. I just, I was thinking maybe nothing happened, but maybe something did. I think something did. <laughs> I, I do too. Uh, they're on the they're so they're on the bus to go to the airport to go to Cancun, and they're all over each other. And Ikechi's like, you know, I think they did a good job, and he's just like nuzzling his nose in her and doing all this stuff that it's like y'all ain't been doing this when y'all were and by yourself. Didn't he like take his finger and yes. like oh put yeah, it in her gross. Mouth and then so it. gross. I was like, what on. What in tarnation? Let me, get some of that. Let me get some of that saliva, girl. Mm. Oh, mm. That was so disgusting. much. Uh, oh. then, <laughs> then David was like, oh, like, you know, did y'all all kiss at the altar? And he came to you, he was like, I got kissed. He did, though. He did. He's not lying. He was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so they like, are like explaining this to the other couples, right? And so then uh, when they're in Cancun, Ikechi, he said, like, so far, so good. He's enjoyed everything about her. He's looking forward to the duck-offs. And everybody's like, what does that mean? He's like, well, we can, like, leave y'all and go be by ourselves. I'm like, most of the honeymoon is by yourself. Yeah. Like, do you know how this works? <laughs> right. You, you know you know. You've been, like, you've been sure watching you've watched at the least. Show. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, we know you watch the show, sir. <laughs> he said he's looking forward to getting to know her wholly. And um, we then then we continue to refer to them when every other couple is talking because mm -hmm. they're the ones that are just like the other couple are like, you know, maybe I'm not like them when keep referring to Ikechi and MM and they say well, like they they're Kim. That. Oh, you know, he was eating it they up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, I think someone at some point who was maybe it was Michelle said like their chemistry is radiating. Yeah, and of course, they're like, Oh, us? Oh, I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Us? I think he said, Come on, radiating. Yeah, uh, <laughs> he, lo he loves the spotlight, he really loves yes. it. Yes, it, it they like, and it definitely felt like more him than her that was trying mm -hmm. to come for this. Like, look at us, we're so solid, we're the mm -hmm. best couple here. Like, y'all want to be like us, mm -hmm. and it felt like she was kind of like somewhat trying to match his energy in that. <sighs> And so um, even Michelle, after she explains their situation, she's like, look, I'm I'm so happy for them. <laughs> Talking about yeah. Ikechi and him, it's like, good Lord. So it'll be very interesting to see like 
how they continue to be over um, the honeymoon because now they've set the bar pretty high in front of the other couples. Um, so they go on like a little, they're like, they're a little date. Like they have a, a pool and they're sitting on like some um, benches or whatever. And she says she eats any and everything. And they get in this conversation about food. He doesn't eat chitlins. He doesn't eat meat. She loves liver. She loves kidneys. She loves gizzards. He doesn't. So why are we eating these intestines? <laughs> he was like, you black, black. And he said he doesn't eat meat. So like after the first organ meat, like why did we have to go down the whole list of all of them? Right, like my <laughs> gizzards are banging. Like, not even, like, <laughs> like, not even liver. <laughs> Ew. Right. He's like, I don't do intestines. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, the only person like in my immediate family that eats chitlins is my dad, and he would cook them, and they smell so Horrendous. bad. Yeah, my mom used to cook them and and eat them. She hasn't mm -hmm. done it forever. Like, yeah, mm -mm. my stepmom loves liver though. Mm. Can't do it. Can't I do it. I can't. There there there's a place in Dallas that does gizzards, and I, I've had that before. I love gizzards. There's a place because there's a place up here that does them. That is, that's mm -hmm. the only place I get them from. I don't do them. Nobody else does. That's that's the only place I get them from when I when I go and visit my mom. Listen, Jason, when's the last time you've had know. gizzards? <laughs> y'all <laughs> know my palate. Okay. <laughs> It's those, those of y'all that know me, y'all know me. I'm the chicken finger man. Okay, I, I'm not touching nothing. That's, I, you that's don't want not, no gizzards? Nah, not we're not doing that. Not doing he that. what did he call them? Like doo doo noodles? That was funny. I'm not gonna lie. I give him that. that oh, was he did say that. Are you chitterlings? <laughs> chitterlings. Yeah, <Right. laughs> pig intestines. Oh, uh, um, and so then he does say, he's like, you know, I don't have a lot of pet peeves, but ignorance is high on that list. So let me that's ask a, you, have you ever been engaged? What do, do those two go together? No. You make sense <laughs> to me. When someone says ignorance is their pet peeve, that means they get triggered very easily. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you know, anything you say or do is going to trigger that. You, like you're ignorant. You're just being ignorant. And when <laughs> Because being ignorant. I get the... I get the vibe that ignorance to him is anyone not knowing something that he knows or agreeing mm. with him on something. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, yeah, I can see any that. different any different perspective or different viewpoint that he has is someone being ignorant. <laughs> like <laughs> I, when he's when he's when we say something like that, ignorance is my pet peeve. That means you get triggered very easily. I think by that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so he asked if she's ever been engaged. She said yes. She was younger. It was 10 years ago, early college. There was infidelities. Uh, their futures weren't aligned. He's like, oh, okay, I was engaged too. At the end of college, there wasn't infidelity and mistrust on my part. And I realized, like, I don't want to ever do that to someone again. And we get a confessional where she says she has a tendency to ignore red flags, but she does <laughs> believe people can grow. Okay. <laughs> now, now, yeah. if we're talking about the uh, subtly dropping stuff in, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> that yep. right there. Mm -hmm. uh, so they do get in the pool, and he take. She tells him to take his shirt off. She wants to see him in his birthday suit, and they're just enjoying each other in the pool. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. it, in, in the preview, we did get that he says in front of the guys that she's the homie. Oh, and then yeah. we cut to her oh, saying, yeah. I'm the homie. <laughs> oh, that's not good. That's not good. Um, that's on. that's code for friend zone. Mm -hmm. So let's get to these ratings. Uh, yeah. Where, where was I last week? We both read a three last week. I'm gonna keep it at a three. Um, I guess I get. I mean, I, I can see this going bad, but I don't see anything really right that now. bright to show me. Uh -huh. yeah. So I want to leave it at a three for me. What about you, Mari? Yeah, that's where I'm at too. It's like I, I can I can definitely see it going bad, but I mean, right now it's fine. They're they're trying to convince themselves still right now that it they're in a right. great spot. So. That's that's more than some of these couples, so I'll, I'll definitely give them a three. Okay, yeah, I um, I will also agree on the three. 
um, only because they're still in this honeymoon phase, no pun intended. Yeah. Uh, but I think once they really get down to the nitty gritty, really start getting to know each other, themes may be highlighted that are like, wait a second. That's like either he's like, that's not what I saw in my wife or she's like, that's not what I saw in my husband. And then they get hit with reality of this is the person that they're married to and they decide that's going to work for them or not. Yep. All right. Last but certainly not least. <sighs> the, the couple you may have gotten kind of the most content for, uh, David and Michelle. We get the wake up. Every time they're in a they're in a frame together, it, she has to look like she's not been held hostage, and she doesn't look like she does a very good job of convincing us that she's not been held hostage. Mm-hmm. Um, but he tells us he's going to go to the gym pretty early. He's, he gets out of bed. Uh, they both neither one of them slept well last night. His alarms apparently that he sets for work went off at like four forty five. So he, he talks about how early he starts work. Uh, and they talk about kind of the differences in our hours. He, you know, he works. Uh, I think he works late right now and she works like nine to five. So they're going to be seeing each other on different times. He wants to get his shift changed. So hopefully their hours can sync up better. Um, we get, they get their breakfast and she starts in on it right away. She's like, so, so what is like live with your parents? Like what is, what is that something you want to do? Is that, is that something that you, you you see yourself doing forever? He's like, no, no. Cause she says, I don't know anyone in their upper 30s that lives with their parents she literally says it's not attractive yeah <laughs> she says is that, is that your plan forever he's like no no he tells he, he keeps playing singing the same tune he's like i choose to live with my parents mm-hmm. it's, to sa- it's to save money uh he you know he tries he really tries to put lipstick on the pig he's like listen it's like an entire different apartment we have our separate entrances. I don't run into them like you think I do. He said he has a kitchen and two bedrooms. Yeah, I mean, but listen, the way he's saying this, the way oh, he's right. putting it, I was like, okay, <laughs> like, that's not that bad. Like, mm-hmm. for the way that we had heard it before, it was like, he's living in a room off the kitchen, like, two bedrooms. Yeah, it sounded down like from McKinley. But this yeah. sounds like you legitimately have like a separate, like, it's a, it's like it's a, a whole apartment. He yeah. Says it's just an apartment under Connected their, his, to the house. Oh. Yeah. Right. There are two separate entrances from the outside. So like, I'm like, okay, like this isn't as bad as we thought. Like, it's not, it's, it's not like great. a mother-in-law suite. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. So like, it's not that bad, but she is just, she's like, well, I cannot, she's I can't like, mm, believe even this. With how you describe this. I'm not feeling yeah, it. She's like, it's not great. It's not great. Uh, <laughs> in confessional, he says he, he hopes that she can look past it. Um, he does like that she's being honest with him. <laughs> like the way he says, like, I guess I like it. <laughs> He's mm-hmm. like, I wanted someone that was honest, but not this honest. Damn. I'm sorry. It's like uh, people staying with their parents is not, uh, first off, it's not all made equally. Like we just pointed out, it's, it's basically him living independently, just like, you know, in the same house building as his parents. Yeah. But two, it's like gestures wildly. Like, <laughs> lady, the economy is not great out here. Like, <laughs> listen, I, I might like I might take up that deal. Like, if I if, if right, I, and I, it's I, not Nick, where Nick is walking upstairs to the kitchen saying good morning to his hey, mom. mom what's for breakfast? <laughs> hey, mom, what's for breakfast? <laughs> exactly. Like, it's just it's it's just weird that she is literally so hung up on this. Like, I'm sorry. Like for me the the past like few years had just moved the goalposts on people living with their parents in a sense of like it is not cheap out here you know what i'm saying it's not cheap out here. me will i ever want to have to go and live with my mom no but i do know that if something happens i sure can me and my whole family sure can you know what i'm saying um so it's just kind of like and i've gone i i have gone back to live with her to like save money for my wedding like when i needed to it, but it's what you're doing with it to me. It's not just yeah. the automatic of living in the same house as your parents. It's like, are you actively working? He has three jobs. Like, are you self-sustained? He says he pays all his bills. You know what I'm saying? And like, I we'll talk about it later, but she's like, oh, does she do your clothes? I don't know if we got an answer to that, but it didn't seem like she did. Like, yeah. it's just, we're being very judgmental here. Extremely. And yeah, and I'm... I want to get y'all's thoughts about it, but 
I'm thinking Michelle is so type A that I don't know if anybody they sat in front of her, would she not have been able to pick something out about them? I like agree. she might have be she might be looking for the unicorn. Yes. I, I think she's extremely judgmental. And mm -hmm. you know, we we made our fun at David over his yeah. situation for sure. But she's taking it too far. Way too far. <laughs> like, like I, I had sympathy for her in the beginning of this season. Yeah. And then I was just like, girl. okay, girl, but damn, way off a little bit. <laughs> like, calm down. With the way that she's going about this, it, like like I said before, it's as if He's looking at her like, so you're going to come live with me and my parents, right? After we get married. <laughs> like, no one is telling you that. No one is saying you have to come live with those parents. Like, I'm sure after the y'all get married, if this works out, y'all will get your own space or live yeah. in your apartment or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. Even if he said that, I think she would doubt his ability to do that. But you mm -hmm. live with your parents now. Like, what? why wouldn't you have done that before? Even though he has explicitly told her he's choosing to stay yeah. here. It does she, I don't know what she, I don't need, I don't know if she needs to see him physically sign uh, <laughs> some papers showing that they have somewhere else to go back to when they get back, even though they're going to be in an apart apartment for these eight weeks. It's like yeah. she can't yeah. see past the fact that like, see past his current living situation when it's like, that's not your future living situation. And no. what world are you going back to? Unless, because I'm sure if he has said it, we would have seen it. If he has said, so I'm thinking after the eight weeks, we live at my parents a little bit, and then... Yeah, but he didn't say that, because that's insane. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? And she, I think she just has this picture in her head, and no matter what he does to disabuse her of this notion, she sees it as like, they, she, they, he lives in the, the two bedrooms down from his parents, she makes him all his meals, she does all his laundry, he has no responsibilities, he pays no bills, that's the vision she has in her head, and no matter what he says... She's stuck in that vision. Yeah. So that's where she's getting her judgment from. And it is mm -hmm. it is like way, way overboard of being judgmental about this man and what and what his life is like. Uh, she meets his family. And mom, mom is like, she's got a pen and pad. She's got a pen and pad. She's like, I've written down some questions for you. And uh, <laughs> yeah. when this interview started, uh, she asked her what her pet peeves are. <laughs> to her credit, she doesn't say men to live with her parents with his parents. Right. She says, I she hates flip-flops. Like, okay. Um, she asked mom, so what are, what are his pet peeves? He says, not being able to work out. She's like, he wanted to work out as soon as this morning. <sighs> and Michelle, she launches into it again, again. She says, he made sure to tell me he lives with his parents. So what is what is that all about? You literally just asked that on the wedding night. The same exact question. You can kind of see the look on mom's face. She's like, this again? She's like, mm -hmm. she's basically says like, okay, he doesn't She might need... as well rolled her eyes. Yeah, uh -huh. like, he doesn't need to live with us. Um, but, you know, that's, he's just doing it to save money. He's 100% in on this and, and you. And Michelle talks about how hesitant she is. <laughs> the cousin, the cousin clocks it. She's like, like, literally, she scrunches her face like, <laughs> So are you not all in on this? Like, what are you talking about? Hesitant. What does that mean? Are you, are you not in this? <laughs> just, I'm just, I'm just overwhelmed. I'm just a little overwhelmed. She, she is overwhelmed to the max in this episode. Mm. Uh, you know, in a confessional, the cousin says, you know, she wants this to work, but she's not all the way in, and she doesn't want David to get hurt. Uh, Michelle assures them she's happy. It's just a lot to process, uh, but her intentions are pure. Uh, David meets with her family. Uh, he talks about how shocked he was to be wearing a, a ring in the gym. You know, if he wants to get to know her better. Uh, they ask him if he's getting vibes. He says, you know, vibes I'm getting are that she's uh, pretty Why overwhelmed. Bring this up? Yeah, she says pretty overwhelmed. The vibes uh, are not my thing. <laughs> no. no, no, not at all. He says he does want to show her that he is the man for her. Uh, his, her family says she's a very independent person. She's always supported herself. She lives alone. Uh, but you know, she has lived with a. Did she live with a significant other? She did live with a significant other. I don't have. That. Uh, she has never. Uh, she has no, never lived. Never. With she's never lived with a significant other, which is, like, which is also like for me another like kind of red alert. Um, right. Yeah, he talks. You know, he says, you know, I I pay my rent, I pay my own bills. Like I'm a very independent person. He's trying to <laughs> assuage the fears, and you can kind of see where Michelle gets her judgment from because the mom and the sister are also kind of like. Mm. That one family? sister that was on the couch with her mom uh -huh. said, 
whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the energy you're bringing is wild. Yeah, because she tells, like, she says she can see the fact that him living with his parents did not go over well with her. He, she says she wants someone that is independent. <laughs> like, and they basically tell him, like, all right, but so, but don't be too pushy. Like, take it slow, pump the brakes. Like, she needs time to process and analyze. My thought of that is, like, did does she know where she is? Like, does she know what she signed up for? Like, this is murder first sight. This is a very accelerated process. We don't got time to slow down. We don't got time to process and analyze. Like, you got to be in or out because this is it just, like. Exactly. <clears throat> it seems like she's not the type of person that should have done this show. I don't understand no, what no. about. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, like nothing about her that we've learned so far would meet the criteria <laughs> for somebody who was would accept anyone that the experts would put in front of her. Mm -hmm, truly <laughs> they basically tell him like okay you gotta it's tough to keep her attention you gotta you don't, don't talk fast I'm like <laughs> is this a full-grown adult or am i talking to a child like i don't <laughs> it's so weird it's so weird <laughs> yeah so they meet up for the debrief uh they're at like a little cafe wait did she you had... did you say that the sister said pump the brakes yeah pump the brakes yep. okay yeah 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 okay she says pump the brakes go slow I, uh, I couldn't believe the, the way she, th that was just so that was a lot and I, I would imagine that this is all comes from michelle like texting yep. her family like yep. you need to tell him to slow down you need to tell mm -hmm. him to like it's too much stop talking to me so much mm -hmm. <laughs> he talking to know me what are you doing <laughs> yeah. oh man so yeah they meet up for the debrief she asked how everything went and he says you know he tells her, he tells you, yeah, your family did tell me to slow down the pace that it takes you out of process. Uh, he says, you're going to make sure that he's working at her pace. He's going to take things slower. It's like, I don't know how you can take things slower. Like, I don't honestly, what, what are we doing? that's going so fast for you. Exactly. <laughs> asking you about married? yourself. Like, <laughs> yeah, he hasn't you about said, yourself. like, okay, let's dive into your trauma. Yeah, they have right. literally scratched the surface. It's just like, it's if bad. this speed is too much for you, tap out now. Yeah. Honestly. She says, so have you had a meltdown yet? <laughs> he's like, uh, he's like, I guess, like maybe in the shower. I was thinking about things like, what about you? She's like, yeah, I cried at the wedding in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of lost it. Like, okay. She's like, I, I didn't want to ruin our moment. So I went and cried by myself in the bathroom with my friends and complained about you, basically. Mm -hmm. Uh it makes him wonder about how the honeymoon is going to go if she's this overwhelmed. He's like, it basically makes like, uh, are you still going on the honeymoon? <laughs> she's like, she's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go to the honeymoon. Yeah, I'm going to go. Uh, he he brings up the living at home situation again. And she asks, like, so, like, are you embarrassed to live at home or just embarrassed to tell people? Wait, first of all, when did I say I was embarrassed about any of this? You're right. Well, oh, he does got a couple. He's like, I get like he she's basically shamed him into yeah. admitting he's embarrassed about this like i, I guess i'm embarrassed like it's, it's, right. kind, of his, it's kind of his yeah. like motion is like I, I guess i'm embarrassed she's like right you are embarrassed as you, you should, should be, be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and she's like and she's like yeah i'm really worried about it it's a big concern for me because <laughs> he's like he's like it's not that big of a deal she's like no it's a big deal to me it's a big concern of mine like oh, mm -hmm. okay uh, and he tells me, like, listen, I just moved back in there eight months ago. He says, I was yeah. on my own for two or three years. He says, listen, I am ready to leave the nest. Um, I, I want to give you your security to know that I am ready and independent. I got two uh, incomes. Yeah. She says, she just talks about how hung up she is on it. It's a major thing. She's like, I know you're saying all the right things, but it's it's on me how I deal with it. Like, like, it's the it. number one thing I'm hung up on right now. So basically at this point, there's nothing you can say that would make me not hung up on this. I have to decide. So then it's like, okay, what then what is he supposed to do? Yeah, yeah, because nothing's gonna change that. Up. I can't go back in the past and not live with my parents. Like right. this is yeah, what the situation yeah. was. There's no there's no way to get over it, but just to get over it. <laughs> At this point, it's only it been eight just months been... too. Like that's crazy to me. Yes. Like she's 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 overdoing it now. Like yeah, she much. really acts like it's been three, four years. Yeah, or At this all point, thirty six years of his life. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, he should have not told her. I and mean, I wonder what sh what else she would have been hung up on. Like if he if goes she... to the gym or something. The gym. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He doesn't mm -hmm. like to spend morning time with me. That's yeah. a big hang up for me. <laughs> uh yeah we get to we get to the bus for the for the honeymoon to go to the airport and michelle is just blown away about how how close everyone is she's like is it me like, 
Yes. Yeah. It's you. <laughs> it's you. <laughs> She's just like, everyone just seems so connected. I'm, I'm just like, I'm in shock. I'm like, like, yeah, I'm girl. still getting over me being married. Yeah, yeah. girl, because you uh, you hung up on stuff. And like, if you just you look at her, like anytime that they sit together, she is so far away from him. Yeah. Like it is crazy. Like on the bus, she is like, as as I said, yeah. like Madison is like closer Thank to David than Michelle is. She's mm-hmm. like all the way over, like scrunched in the corner. Like and you know, he has the body type that you would just want to snuggle into. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a big old teddy bear. <laughs> yeah. um, it's almost like a you know, a Chris and Alyssa, whenever they had to sit together, it's like she was just mm-hmm. all cramped on one side. Yes. But it's kind of, it's really giving that energy. Um, uh, David talks about how you know he has to slow down, he has to think about his wife. You know, this is a different kind of life now. And he talks about how the fact that you know, it, this is when he's talking to the group. He says, You know, Cal said that he would match me with someone that would make me better. Um, uh, he talks about he does tell him, I got some stuff off my chest fast, and that really caught her off guard. She is overwhelmed, <laughs> so overwhelmed. Uh, Michelle keeps talking about the fact that it was hard, it's hard thinking about yourself for six years, and now she's gonna have to check in with someone, she's gonna have to be, you know be living her life with someone um this is this is when they get to the honeymoon and this is like they're on a seat and this is where i noticed the most where she's just <laughs> like cramped onto one side trying to put as much space in between them as yeah. she can yeah uh the next morning at the honeymoon again we get the uh, whole thing with like i'm sorry my alarms woke you up again i'm gonna i'm gonna turn those off she's very annoyed with the alarms going off which i'm like I- I get it. You got the automatic things such situated. You don't think about your alarm at any other point during the day. Mm-hmm. But look, right then and there, just turn it off because you know you're not going to need that for the next right. five days at least. But he does. Mm-hmm. He turns them all off. Yes, uh, finally. And he talks about the fact that he slept on the couch last night and that he woke up at 1 a.m. and got six chicken tacos <laughs> and passed out <laughs> on the couch. I'm like, okay, so this might be a little of the immaturity coming through like this is like that's like a 20 year old thing to do like i'm gonna get up at 1 a.m get six chicken tacos and i'm gonna pass out on the couch i was trying to figure that out like did he get up or where was he up she went to bed and he was just like i'm gonna keep partying <laughs> like, that's what i was that's what i was trying to figure out i was like okay did he hang out you know and she went to sleep like where the couple is hanging out together and, right. and she wasn't feeling it. Like, that's what I was yeah. wondering. And she says she's not surprised he slept on the couch. Like, but it is concerning because, you know, they should be at a point where they're sleeping in the same room to spend more time together. But they which just I'm like, how? how? how <laughs> you're, you are hung up. Mm-hmm. What the, it, there, you are not creating an environment no. that y'all should be even there at all. It's like y'all want to sit in the bed and talk about how much he loves the parents some more. Right. Like, is that what you want to do? <laughs> <laughs> um, so he, he does to his past a little bit. He tells her he used to compete in professional bodybuilding. Um, he doesn't do it anymore. He taught, you know, and then they talk about the work that's going to take to maintain a marriage. And again, she's like, are you motivated to live on your own? Like, do you do things on your own? Does your mommy do your laundry for you? No, I knew she had an attitude when he was like, you know, I don't do the bodybuilding anymore because, like, I have two jobs now, now a wife. Uh, yeah. Do you see me as a job? Because you <laughs> yeah. just, you said wife with, you know, your jobs. And it wasn't like, oh, he, he, like, if yeah. someone else said this, it'd be like, oh, that's probably a joke. But no, yeah. she already had a chip on her shoulder because she was already thinking, I'm about to talk about where he lives again. Okay. <laughs> again. <laughs> She's like, are you motivated to do things on your own? Like, does your mom do your laundry for you? Because I got to be honest, it's a turn off for me. Like, you aren't giving me independent vibes. Like, wow. She's like, she's like, I would never make that choice. Like, God, wait, oh, you are no. judgy to the max, girl. And uh, like, in what world would you make a 100% of the same decisions as another person? Like, not even just your husband, as a friend, anybody. So the, the fact that he has made a decision, a choice that you would not personally make, that mm-hmm. does not mean that that's just like a deal breaker. Yeah. I can't remember. Is she close to her family? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because her mom yeah, was there. Yeah, sisters. Okay. Yeah, sisters were there. Yeah, it was them. Okay, okay. I'm. It's coming back to me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in confession, he says he's thrown off by this constant talk of his living situation. He's like, I thought we were moving forward. Yeah. Um, but you know, he he tells her, listen, you want to talk about it? I'm open to talking about it whenever you want. Uh, just you know, let's keep talking and communicating. Because Michelle. 
What is he about to do about it in Cancun? He can't move <laughs> out right now. He's literally going to move into an apartment with you after this honeymoon. Exactly. Like, and then at that, if things go well the eight weeks, y'all will probably move in together somewhere else or move into your apartment. Like, it's literally a situation that you don't need to worry about anymore. It's and never yeah. going to be a thing. It's never going to not be a thing because, okay, they move into their apartment. Now they got to go look at where each other lives. Then, oh. Oh now she's God. actually has to see the place, this well, place that has maybe been haunting her. Maybe that'll week. help. Yeah, maybe it'll like, help to know that he does live in his own that. space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just got to tell mom, like, when we're over here touring the place, do not come downstairs. Like, do not come in my apartment. Because <laughs> right. that mm -hmm. will trigger things. Yes. Maybe I need if her she, to know I don't see y'all. Yeah. Maybe if she sees that, like, he has his own stuff, he has his own laundry, hopefully he has his own laundry, and mom doesn't come down to do the family's laundry. <laughs> Just show her that you are independent. I mean, I shouldn't have to say that, but she is obviously so, so, so stuck up on this. Like, it's it's, it's kind of insane. It is an insane. Three situation. times this episode, every interaction we had with them, she was bringing this up. That is wild. It's like, and I feel like they can't even talk or connect about anything else because she that's all their content. He tried to connect on something else. He tried to talk about his past, and she pulled her right back over to the living situation. Like, Bro, she's like, now that you talk about jobs, let's talk about income. And if you had some income, you would be living in your own place. <laughs> so tell me, <laughs> it was just like the transition back to his living yeah. arrangement was it was masterful because how did that that conversation get back there? It's just like I, I couldn't believe we talked about this three times this episode. Oh, no. They couldn't talk about anything else. Like that was, that was all their content was talking about the living situation. Yeah. Um, do I even have to ask what what ratings are at? Well, for in the preview, she says she's feeling sm smothered, and she's talking to someone. It looks like maybe a producer yeah, saying yeah. she doesn't even want to try. At this point, are we getting it out of the honeymoon? I think we might not even leave the right. So this together. isn't even a cheating situation. <laughs> Well, unless yeah. he's with somebody that's still in a relationship. But they did on the season preview. There was talk about him an sexing affair. someone else. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe so they maybe do they get out of the honeymoon. Or was that in the honeymoon room? Mm, possibly, we'll see. Uh, I, I think it's very possible that we don't leave the honeymoon together. Or if we leave the honeymoon together, we're like living separately and and quote unquote seeing how this works out, living separately. You know, yeah. Like out thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's I mean it's a one for me for sure. Uh for it's, a, to go ahead. it's a it's one a for one. me. Yeah. And yeah. It, it feels like she is definitively the downfall of this relationship. She is yeah. using information that he cannot change at all mm -hmm. in this present moment as like the reason for like and, and she as the reason for their downfall. And she's even saying, Oh. There's you're doing all the right things. You're doing things for me. You're saying sweet things and there's nothing you can do because I'm the one caught up on this. So it's yeah. for me to get over. I mean, oh, I, I don't even have time to hate on him or make fun of him because <laughs> right. like she's being so awful. Like, yeah. I, now I gotta feel, I gotta feel yeah. bad for him. Look at us defending yeah. David. Yeah, mm -hmm. don't make me defend him. <laughs> See, yeah. I'm in this impossible position now. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a one. Like I, and I'm trying to think. I, I, you did say about the the text messages. I can't remember them having much during like the season preview. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's not. It let's. It seemed like most of it was at the honeymoon because that that line of like, uh, "Does your mommy do your laundry for you?" Was yep. In this episode, it I was, was like, oh, episode, yeah. we're, we're getting a lot of their content up front, so that's, yep. not, that's never a good that's look. Wow, we got yeah. four couples to cover. That's wild. Wild. I mean, listen, we get down, we've gotten down to two before, so. <laughs> True. <laughs> True. And they had to force that second one. <laughs> like, uh -huh. They had to force them to stay together. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Huh. Yeah. Um. So, yes. Thank you so much for sticking with us to talk about episode four. We'll be back next week to talk about episode five. We continue to talk about the honeymoons. Make sure you go subscribe to the Love at First Sight feed. Make sure you go watch our interview with Pastor Cal if you haven't already. 
Um, it's great hearing from him. And he does give some insight, uh, like behind the scenes information about Married at First Sight and what's it like being an expert on Married at First Sight. Um, so definitely go give that a, a watch on YouTube, on the RHAP, RHAP YouTube channel, or wherever you listen to your podcast on the Love at First Sight feed. Make sure you go join our Facebook group, Perfect Match Podcast. Uh, this week, the password is, are you going to live there your whole life? Great shout out to david and michelle <laughs> uh jason what are you up to where can people follow you uh for now you can find me on twitter at jayr1085 as far as podcasting goes uh i'm doing the good pod where uh, me and marissa garza talk about the show the good wife and all the good wife related shows like elsbeth we're also talking about elsbeth as its second season is going along um recently on the we know scripted tv channel over on the rod has podcast uh conglomerates i guess you would say <laughs> uh i got together with sasha joseph and franny Marin to talk about agatha all along the first season had a blast talking about that show i was also over on the 90 day fiance podcast with puya last week talking about 90 day fiance so those are all places you can find me and my takes on things and all that good stuff all right mari well uh, of course, me and Chappelle are over on the recap kickback talking about whatever we want. Mm -hmm. uh, last week, we kind of did like a black entertainment news um, roundup. We talked a lot about the Megan Thee Stallion uh, documentary and uh, Young Thug <laughs> like not serving. It. Well, he's free, <laughs> technically. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, so we had a lot of fun talking about that. Uh, coming up this week, we will be finishing Beauty in Black, talking about the Tyler Perry um, Netflix uh, show, Beauty in Black. We were cracking up when we talked about just the first two episodes um, two weeks ago. So now we have officially watched the whole season. And I'm very sure we are going to be cutting up on this podcast. So make sure you go and listen to that by, by subscribing at recapkickback.com or going and watch, watch our videos, which is really fun, on our YouTube page by going to youtube.com slash at recapkickback. Um, other than that, uh, I'm over on Blue Sky now having so much fun over there. Uh, at Mari talks too much dot blue sky dot social. It's fun where it's it's happening. That mass migration is it's happening. So mm -hmm. get on get on the train, y'all, and uh, and follow me over on Blue Sky. But that's it for me. Love it. Oh wait, no, sorry, oh. crime scene. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Horrendous. Uh, me and Sarah Caribbean, uh <laughs> bring True Crime Tuesdays uh, over on the Crime Scene Podcast, where we review uh, uh, true crime documentaries. This week was a very heavy documentary. We did uh, Serial Killer serial killer Capital Los Angeles. It was a documentary about, like, basically four serial killers, uh, were like happening in Los Angeles at the same time and how the police like tracked them all down. We did not know the subject matter going into it. Um, it was a lot of like black female victims. It was, it was actually all black female victims. Joyce. And yeah, it, this is just not the time for that. <laughs> so yeah. we, we had a very interesting conversation. So you can go to crimescenepod.com in order to subscribe there or just type in crime scene wherever you get your podcast. That is it. <laughs> Love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so y'all can uh, follow me anywhere or on, on all social media at Asia Like Asia. I'm also on Blue Sky now. So Twitter, Instagram, um, you know, while that's still a thing, uh, mm -hmm. Instagram, uh, TikTok. Uh, so yeah, go give me a follow. And yeah, we'll be back next week to talk about episode five. So thank y'all so much for joining us and we'll see y'all next week. Bye.